Hello and welcome to the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, episode 220, Cracking Open the Suggestion Box. I'm Sean, and here with me, the Tabletop Bellhop himself, Mo. I am Mo Tuzno, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, helping you make your game nights better. We record all of our podcast episodes live on Twitch on Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern, and you really should join us some Wednesday. We'd love to see you in the chat room. Tonight is going to be a little special because we've got Deanna joining us later in the show to help us go through the pile of feedback we got uh, from the survey we included as part of our fifth birthday celebration. After that, we've got a couple of reviews. We're sticking to our current schedule of two reviews per episode. Uh, we're going to do some kind of seasonal ones with The Pumpkin Problem, which is a holiday hijinks game that's totally fitting for the season, and The Deadlies, which I personally think has that kind of horror, Seven Deadly Sins, fits in with Halloween, um, at least some parts of Halloween. And this one's been called Uno for Gamers, so we'll be talking about that. Then we're going to wa wrap up with our usual talk of the games we've been playing, including a bunch of games played with Sean and Deanna this past weekend. Well, we mentioned lots of things during the show, and you can find links to all of it in our show notes at tabletopbellhop.com slash episode 220. Links there may be affiliate links, which help support the show. Plus, some products discussed tonight will be review copies provided by publishers. <laughs> Now, since our Ask the Bellhop segment tonight is going to be all about fan feedback, what we're going to do is skip over our usual suggestion box segment. Though before that, we've got a seasonal announcement to get to. So as we head into October, we thought it would be a good time to remind everyone that you can expect us to be taking some time off in the near future. Yeah, this is the same thing that happens every year. Um, it's it's already started it seems Black Friday season is coming even earlier this year. We complain about how early it is every single year. Uh, this year, it seems to be starting with Amazon Big, or sorry, Amazon Prime Big Deal Days, which are going to hit on October 10th and 11th. Um, there's actually already a sale going on on Amazon right now, but that's I don't know. That's like a Target price match because it's Target Circle Days, which we're trying to get in before Prime Days. It's just a mess, right? So. After this week gets done, we're going to roll into early Black Friday deals, and then you're going to have pre-Black Friday deals, then you're going to have Black Friday deals, then Black Friday week deals, then Cyber Week deals, and Cyber Monday sales, then post-holiday sales, and so on. The sales won't end until New Year's, it seems, every year. So you're going to want to watch the tabletop gaming deals side of the Bellhop yeah. as Mo and D try to capture the best board game and RPG deals out there throughout this season of savings. And, you know, we'll toss in links to all of our different places to find us uh, with X falling apart. We've kind of diversified. You can find us more places than ever. Now, for those of you listening to the podcast, though, what I'm sure you care of about even more, though, is the actual time off we're going to be taking. So right now we're still trying to determine exactly how much time we're going to take off and exactly when. Now, last year we took off all of November. And I got to say, in the middle of all that, it felt like a bit much. We may need to do the same again this year, though I'm hoping to maybe squeeze in maybe an AMA or even just a check in. Hey, how's it going? And maybe talk about what our holiday wish list is or something like that. We'll keep you updated during this segment on our Discord and through our newsletter. Now, before we burst open the suggestion box and throw stuff all over the room, how about we stop by the lobby and see how the awesome folk in our chat room are doing tonight? We're here to answer your gaming and game night questions tonight with a special guest, and she games. Deanne is here joining us. This podcast was created to be a dear Abby for tabletop gamers, and our main focus has always been on trying to help you. To that end, as part of our fifth birthday celebration, we included some pertinent questions as ways to end and yeah, ways to earn professional. To that end, as part of our fifth birthday celebration. We included some pertinent questions as ways to earn extra entries in our anniversary giveaway, hoping to hear from as many fans as possible on ways we could improve the show. These questions included, tell us something you love about the show. Is there something you wish we would change or drop from the show? And what's on your bellhop wish list? There were a couple of others like a uh, couple of others like us looking for episode suggestions and asking about games people brought due to us. But it's those first three that we want to focus on tonight. So over the last few weeks, Deanna has taken the time to compile all of the answers we got from all of our questions into an Excel file or something. 
grouping similar answers together and in general trying to sort through all of this stuff and make sense of it all. Now that we have that, what we're going to do tonight is let Deanna go through and read the replies and we'll discuss each piece of feedback together. So the fun part, well, at least I I hope it's the fun part. Uh, If most of the feedback's negative, it might not be much fun. Uh, we might be sitting here for a roast for all I know. Uh, but the, the what should be interesting, at least, is the fact that neither of us, neither Sean or I, have seen or read any of this feedback. Oh, come on. Either way, it'll be interesting to see your reactions. <laughs> there you go. Now, one thing to note before we get going is that this feedback came from a variety of Bellhop fans, not just podcast listeners. We heard from people who read the blog, watch us on YouTube, our chat room regulars on Twitch, and fans of our Tabletop Gaming Deals accounts, where we share deals on tabletop games. And I'm just putting everything in anonymous. Yes, yeah, we are not going to call out anyone who call, uh, said a specific question or uh, answered in a specific way. That's right, we're not talking about you, Bob. Exactly. <laughs> so the first question was, tell us something you love about the show. That was a little longer than that, but that was the gist of it. What do we have? Okay, well, first, there was a bunch of people saying, wait, you have a show? Because they were just there for the giveaway. I just found out about it. I'm going to go listen now. I just discovered the Tabletop Bellhop. I'm excited to start listening. I've not heard it yet. My friend just told me about it. I don't know your show. I just follow you on Twitter. I don't know your show. I only know about your deals page and, you know, more of the similar. So So I'm not (laughs) going to read you all of those. So Fair enough. Then we. uh, So the first legit comment I have here is someone really likes consistency. You always have quality production and content. So that's nice. nice. Yeah. And then we get the reviews. So they, they weren't actually talking about our schedule. Or Obviously they definitely not. weren't talking about the schedule. Uh, or and perhaps realistically, they're also one of the folks that haven't actually listened to us. I don't know. And, and, and they probably aren't talking about consistency from like the first episode till now, because there's definitely a curve there that's, uh, yes, yes. that's progressed over the time. Although I, I would say in the last consistent year. Curve. You would say in the last year? We've definitely been more consistent. Like the format yeah. of the show, we haven't tweaked the format. That's in true. Quite a we long nailed that now. part down. Yeah. Uh, so then it says, I love your list of cake items during big sale days, like Prime Day. I, I'm assuming a cake item is like a remote item. item. It's not a term I've heard before. So they like our sales. Uh, That's deals. Cool. We try. Yeah. I liked hearing Mo answer my question about co op board games right from the beginning. Cool. I like all the giveaways you've done over the years. Thank you for that. <laughs> Not I everyone loves those, giveaways. But... I am fairly new to listening to the pod, but my favorite moment was at the beginning of the year when you talked about oddball games. In the over-the-top okay. segment, you mentioned Gloom, and that made me happy because my best friend is a huge Halloween fan, and that is his favorite game. He just likes all things spooky and Halloweeny. Anyway, that gave me some validation, and I was able to refer him to the pod through that episode. Oh, that's so, cool. Always yeah. nice. Like, see, I told you Gloom was good. And, and I have to say that the, the whole oddball idea is, is good, too, because, I, you know, there is so many so much content out there that's the same. It's the same people reviewing the new hotness or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it, it is a good comment to take that, you know, review some stuff that other people aren't reviewing. Review yeah. some of the the oddball content out there and it can make a uh, big dent. Um, yeah. And I think there's some. Some more things would agree with that idea later on. People saying they're like that we're not just the new hotness. Uh, <laughs> I'm I glad. might be. <laughs> yeah. So that was a good takeaway, right? Because we worry about that sometimes. Yeah. I got to say that oddball episode was a fun one. And and we'd have more to add, I think, mm, at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, I might be biased, but the historical game segment was really awesome. I might know uh, who that was. Yes, you <laughs> might be able chance. to know who yeah. that was. I know from. who that was. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how many game historical game fans we have. That That is definitely something we haven't really delved into like like we, we have some like we did do an episode on it and we talked to specifically about um board games that um, hobby miniature gamers like like historical miniature right. gamers would like and I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the, where this comment comes from but like i we almost feel like we need to play more like there was that and like we reviewed the red burnous and i think that's like it in the last two years well, based on the fact of how long Julius Caesar has been on our pile of shame. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but like but, Lord of the Ring is considered one of the best games. It was in the board game Geek Top 10. I don't know if it's still there. Mm-hmm. It was number one in strategy games forever. And it's I can get to it. It's one of the things that I'm like, man, we should sit down and play yeah, that. I'll play it with you tomorrow. Um, okay, I dig the reviews. 
I like how yeah. candid and honest Sean and Mo are about everything. Um, I like when you answered my question about ways to protect your board games. Cool. So people like it when we answer their questions, which mm. understandable. <laughs> it's good. I like the Amazon sales list. Yeah. I enjoyed the Shift Deluxe unboxing. I have to assume they're talking about Reality Shift. Yep. Probably. I gotta say, for unboxings, you gotta watch. You gotta watch the. Uh, Arnak Expedition Leaders. That was the most enjoyable one for me to watch <laughs> myself on. I'm like, man, I need to unbox more stuff. I'm like super hyped about. Yeah. The yeah. Excitement. That one yeah. I just had fun with. The excitement makes a difference. It really does. Um, I love the family friendly, honest reviews and conversations. I, I think it's important that the term family friendly was in there. So somebody appreciates that you don't let me talk and <laughs> drop all my F-bombs. Um, so. Yeah, we, we try to keep the show family friendly at, at all times. At least the what goes out to the public part. Yeah. Sometimes the people here on Twitch might might get a little not quite friendly, family friendly language. Uh, we do tend to warn people when that's coming. Uh, but yeah, for the podcast, the reviews, or, I don't think I've ever sworn in a review. Uh, only if you're having tech issues, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that's also really important. I, I don't I think people underestimate how important that is to Apple podcasts. Uh, unfortunately or fortunately, whatever, uh, Apple is rather curious that way and, and will definitely sort of deprecate anyone who checks the uh the explicit box so right. it, it it benefits us to that but it's also just kind of you know it's just been easy enough to, to go that way and keep everyone happy that way mom and dad can listen to it in the car with the kids in the back seat and don't have to worry i like just having a place where i can go and hear people discuss games cool. cheers yeah uh the variety of games I enjoyed your review of Aventuria. It convinced me to get the game and then all of the expansions. Speaking of which, I'm going to announce live here, breaking news. We have the newest Aventuria expansion on its way mm. and oh. the latest game from Rebel Studios. I didn't even way. know that. That's exciting. Yep. There you go. It's something to surprise Deanna with. Um, we hooked up. They reached out to us and wanted to promote their newest game. And I said, hey throw in this and uh, what i did do is i gave them fair warning our kids aren't really kids anymore um if your game's aimed at kids i i you, you might not get the same review you would have got when you sent the original game when the kids were much younger and they were like no the big goal of our games is that they are family friendly fun for people of all ages but especially still enjoyable by adults and gamers so that's what they're looking for i offer to give it cool uh, okay, somebody here says your radio voices are easy to listen to, and the map making software episode is useful. Cool. Mm. I know uh, people dig Sean's voice. I, well, always I, I, I get, I get a mix. Terrible. I get we we because we yeah, do get do people get who say back off on the uh, on the on the radio voice, and and I have somewhat. So yeah. I, I've tried to find the balance of a little bit of it and 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 not too much of it. Yeah. It's weird because, like, we've had other people, like, praise it, right? And then we've had others go, like, Sean's got to stop at the Silly Voices. Uh, I love the deals and sales. I love all the deals you post on Twitter. Yep. I have numerous games on my shelf that I otherwise wouldn't have purchased without you showing that deal. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's I, good. Well, yeah, it depends, right, so. depends if they're getting into that hoarder territory or not. But still, thank you. Uh, I really just like Mo, and I like Sean, and I respect their opinions. All okay. Right. I'll take it. Um, cool. I like all the topics and content. Okay. Um, sometimes I feel like somebody just put something because they're entering a giveaway. Yeah, but, well, there is that sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I love the varied content, gaming news, opinions, some of the non-board game stuff, example, puzzle boxes, etc. Okay, so that's still I, tabletop stuff. Right, so I thought that was important to note because, again, the puzzle boxes, we were kind of veering away from board games, and we've always been like, do people like that or not? So, um... All the Sean Cons. Love me a Sean Con. And in <laughs> I think all we know caps, who that is. Sean Con. Sean Con. We've had a couple people say that, though. It's not just one person. Um, I tend yeah, we to got, watch... Speaking of which, stick around to the end of the show if you want some semi. We got a Sean Con. Uh, semi. Minor, it's it's, minor it's minor a little Sean Con. Con. It's Sean. Didn't quite get there to be a Sean Con. I tend to watch bits and pieces of the podcast. I find them very long. But regardless, okay. they are better than quite a few of them out there. A shorter version with then a link to the extended review would be nice. Well, know, okay, that sounds like specifically for reviews. Huh. Like we tried that for the full podcast and it did not work. 
Mm-hmm. And I, I don't think I'd be willing to try that again. But shorter reviews, I don't know what I have talked about. And Deanna and Sean know this. I don't think we've mentioned on the show was doing going to YouTube shorts, TikTok style videos, like short one minute long that would then link to the other. It's not oh. clear to me if they're talking here about the podcast or the videos. And if no, for the it podcast, says, well, yeah, it said review. Yeah, for the podcast, maybe what they're thinking is when you get to the review section, like a more of a summation. And then if they wanted to hear the extended review, they could. We already kind of do that, though. Well, I, I, again, I this this is where this is where you and I differ. I still think that our our, our reviews on the video, the video reviews are a little long. And I know you expand more on the blog. Like I know we are taking the video is the shorter short form answer. But again, short form for YouTube varies. And if we could keep if we if we came in uh, under 10 minutes or within 10 minutes on a on a review, I think that would be a little bit more approachable maybe i don't know it's, it's hard to say for youtube yeah purely purely on a youtube uh standpoint at that point yeah i never know because I, I we haven't had that feedback yet tonight but i get so much feedback about i love how detailed your reviews are i love how in-depth and how you really deep dive so that's the hard part is is i get both what i need to start doing is noting where i'm getting those comments mm-hmm. if, if the because i tend to just like get a dm or someone will be like oh i read your review or i saw your review and i'm like well where'd you see it and mm-hmm. i don't know at that time i'm just gonna have to interject uh, sorry for those of you listening at home but roger you're just so late like we were we almost had a hype train but thank you for the <laughs> sub we, we could have had a hype train <laughs> um, we are terrible to twitch streamers yes we are all right Am See, I roger Dodger the saying one? there's too many short short reviews on youtube already and that's that's kind of what I'm thinking. Like, there's already people who do it. There's already board games in a minute, and board games in three minutes. And well, and again, I I, I don't think we should be at that level. There's there's yeah. way too much for us to say to go down under five minutes. But I think if we were able to find a, a, the sweet spot and and keep it in ten, yeah, that might be the magic. No, I don't know. I really Our goal has yeah. never been to cater to YouTube, though. YouTube yes. is just like an extra byproduct because we're recording anyways, right? Yeah, but again, now we have three people in the chat are like, nope, long YouTube, basically. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going right. to read them all out, but yes, yeah, it's yeah. like there, there are people in the space who do seven minute videos and there are people who do 45 minute videos. I prefer the 45. Mm. True enough. That's, that's that's what we're getting from our, our, our long term fans, at least. Okay. That was one I'd love to know. Like maybe we need to do at some point a survey. I mm-hmm. the thing is the comment said, and this is where I think it's right, is we probably should be catering to both. I don't know if we could do um tabletop bellhop express, but do reviews instead of like like we were managing to fit the full episode in what? Was it five minutes or fifteen? I can't remember. Fifteen, no, was, I don't 15 remember. was the episode. The one 15. thing we could conceive of doing, or I could conceive of doing, is for the video or for the for the podcast. We mm-hmm. format the review in a way where I can cut out some of it. Yeah. So we have the, the, so the podcast gets a, a, you know, whatever 20 minute review. Uh, but I could do a YouTube 10 minute or a five minute or something. We like, we just format it where there's a chunk that clearly lined easy up. cuts. Um, yeah. even if it's just like our, our, you know, the intro and the, and the end, like the, the, this is what the game is. Oh, yeah. This, the big thing is cut out the how to play. Cut yeah. out the how to play. Yeah. Yeah, because like, not everyone wants that. Though enough people said they they like it, and some people yeah. like our overviews. But yeah. yeah, if we did a here's what the game is, and here's who we think should buy it, and here's who we think shouldn't buy it. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Yeah, and well, what the chat room's basically saying is, if it's long and it's something I don't care about, I check out. Right. Whereas if mm-hmm. it's short, they probably pay attention for the whole time because it's short. Right. So there is that. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I that's that's one even, to keep discussing. I think. How how long are we allowed to go on shorts now? I don't. I know it was thirty seconds at one point, but I think it's like long. No, way it's like, like three now. minutes or something now. So we may. I may actually be able to cut a video. I may have to look into that. It's not going to happen this week, but I may into have to look short? into that. Yeah, because like, yeah. we're all we're all. If if I do the the top and the bo- and the bottom of the review, we mm-hmm. kind of are already neatly set up that way. Right. Yeah. Maybe it's cut out the part about. where you talk about see the unboxing and the component quality yeah, too. Yeah. yeah. So, like, cause that's, that's like a part of the beginning that I tend to throw in all the time. It's only 60 yeah. seconds for shorts. Okay. No, I think we can go more than 60 seconds. I watched someone the other day who just kept going, <laughs> but it maybe depend on, <laughs> like, it may know, depend on whether you're a partner or not. Those have gotten longer. I think they're up to like 10 or six minutes. If you're at like, yeah, um, Instagram is where I'm like, this isn't even what minutes, I want anymore. Well, even, even TikTok is 10 minutes now. <laughs> yeah. That's what I said. Like 10 minutes. 
Uh, shorts where you click. I don't know. Shorts, you can't insert links, unfortunately. No. I yeah, wouldn't. Really that functionality is not there. Like, I would love to have the thing that happens here, which I can't do anymore because where it's yeah, showing these, up would be over right, Deanna. These over there. These the over there. Point. Not yeah. that I don't know what I'm going to If I remember, I'm going to put something popping up over there right now. <laughs> no. Maybe it'll be a link to our shorts. Anyway, sorry. That, that right. was a good one to no, talk I'm about. I'm glad we did it to uh, come back to later. Yeah, yeah, put a pin in that. Where's the, yep. the ding it? I ding. I dinged it. Yeah. All right. Um, I enjoy the variety of topics that sort are of covered each show, reviews, what we've been playing, and listener questions. So they like our format. Pretty much everything. Yep. yep. Cool. I learned that this website has a good design, and I've been using it to find new games. I do not listen to the podcast. See, somebody likes my website. Hey, you know what? The website. I, it, that's, that's totally honest feedback. Yeah. There are great personalities on the show. Just put cool. a pin in this one for later. Okay. <laughs> Someone does not like the personalities on the show, I'm guessing, dude. Uh, Math Guy Dave, I'm going to skip that one. Uh, we're we're going to – the shorts is an inside joke. And 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 I, I I won't be doing that for for reasons some people will know. Um, I always appreciate the deal spotlight. Okay. Oh man, you guys hit an intersection of my interests when you did the board game IP law episode. We uh, have gotten a lot of love on that one. Yeah, that yeah, one has yeah. been popular. We're still not lawyers. We are still yep. not lawyers. Nor do we play them on TV. Oh, I love your personalities and your friendliness on how you approach games. I love the hosts. The constant content and reviews on games. Ooh. I think it's adorable how people think we're constant when we when we keep skipping weeks. Yes. Um, I there's usually something coming out every week though. Like even if we skip a week, we manage, I get an article out or we get some unboxing videos up or something. Yeah, you're always doing something. Something, something's coming out. I like the audience interaction. I enjoy that it's nice. a podcast, but also how much you interact with the audience while recording. So is that um, someone who listens to the podcast who likes to hear that we're interacting? All I will tell you is it was not a name I recognize, so it's not okay. one of our regulars. So, so probably someone who, who either watches or listens. And that's interesting because we do cut out a large portion, a but not everything. We do, you know, we do interact. If if in the middle of an episode something really uh, tan, um, important or, or, or relevant comes up, we do call mm -hmm. it out. And that's, uh, I think that is something that, that's handy. I like all the new game recommendations. I like that you answer unique questions, ones that I don't usually see on other game podcasts or blogs. Nice. Yeah, that goes with the oddball recommending odd games. That's, yeah. It is something I think sets us apart. So well, That's what we're I trying to proud do. Of. So. Yeah, basically. Um, I love the honest discussion you guys have on the show. I love your passion for games. Way back on episode 10, your description of Wallenstein Shogun convinced me to put Shogun on my shopping list. Cool. I have been looking for a better combat game, the good old Risk, something more complex that wasn't just luck of the dice, and Shogun oh, yeah. scratched the itch, and that cube tower is awesome. You're right. Yeah. We got we to gotta break that one out again. Just just don't break out the third of no. those cube tower games. No. <laughs> No, that one doesn't exist. We just we don't, we don't talk about it. I should have known when we were at Origins and we wanted to get a review copy. And they're like, you don't really want this one. And I was yeah. like, no, no, we really want to try it. And they're like, OK. Yeah, it's kind of funny because um, this year, Travis from The Op was was very clear about that. And he's like, I know which of our games are good. <laughs> he literally said when I was talking to him about review copies. I'm not going to say which games he was talking about at the time, but he literally yeah. said, yeah, yeah. They're like, I'm the publisher. I'm in charge of this, and I know which of our games are good. Not everything like, is for okay. everyone. Make me kind of uh, wonder why you publish the other ones. Well, because <laughs> they appeal to someone, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just not, people not like you Candyland. and I. People like yep. Snakes and Ladders. Yep. Um, I really liked your review of Big Trouble in Little China. I don't even remember what we said. In that that is going back. Yes. That's going, that's um, not also going back, but it's also, we weren't all that polite to it. I mean, it wasn't no, a great I, game. I think we were really critical <laughs> Unless it's of the Legacy Lopan review. The Legacy yeah. Lopan was better, yeah. Uh, the honesty of the reviews always makes it refreshing. Especially rule reading and misunderstandings. It's true, it happens to all of us. So oh, yes, we screw up pops. all the time. Battle yep. Ops rule number one. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're not. There's no, it's good. It, like, it's important to say, hey, look, we screwed this up. Check to see if you're going to screw it. that, if you're screwing that up. Mm -hmm. One um, of the reviews tonight, 
It ends up we have played Extreme every single time we played. Yeah, that one shocked me. I had I had to edit the closed captioning on the uh, <laughs> of, of of the ask this week to to cover yeah. up our uh, our mistakes. Uh, uh, our closed I captioning did... may be more accurate than our actual voices. There you go. <laughs> Uh, I dig the no-nonsense but also fun approach the guys have to the hobby. Nothing sticks out. I just love the vibe you have. I love all the reviews. I think you can guess who this one's from. I love the bellhop mugs. (laughs) Um, We've already had several of those comments in the chat tonight, so there we go. (laughs) Your review content is great. I dig your Amazon sale links. I love the Halloween game night tips. Cool. Cool. I was like trying to decide if we need to do another one of those this year, if it's been long enough. We're due. There's a bunch of new ones out that I think we, because there's enough new Halloween-y content that we've yeah. encountered since then, I think we could do it again. Plus, people seem to dig it. So um, let's unbox some stuff we brought home from Origins that I think would particularly fit well. Uh, figuring out how we are going to unbox up with the with the lack of studio setup is something we have to well, tackle. Well, the big thing I is I need the other PC. Yeah. And then I'd probably just go back to my old setup but it'd be in high def because that part's important. You need to be able to see the cards and not zoom in. But when when people are watching it on a TV instead of a monitor, they need it to look clear. Matt, that's conversation for another time, though. Yeah. Uh, folks like hearing the Great White North banter. <laughs> they, I love hearing about new games and the recommendations about the complexity and playability. And I love that Mo was able to make this his full-time gig and really get into giving it his all. Hey, I like that part, too. We <laughs> truly do put in a lot of hours on this nonsense. Um, there is that part of it. Oh, yes. Just the open and honest opinions mean a lot. Keep up what you do. Cool. I love that you talk about what's hot, but you also talk about older games. Someone else, so that loves, <laughs> yeah, someone else that loves the humor. Uh, that dig funny, the, so that one confuses I me. know that one confuses me. I'm like, we are not a comedy routine show. I'm like, we're yes. funny. We are not shut up. I try to throw something never in every once in a while, but it usually lands pretty flat. So it's, it's yeah. I need a laugh track. <laughs> okay. Uh, definitely need a laugh track. Yeah, I am not a giggler. <laughs> you don't get the, 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 the laughter in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, honesty about the games, good and bad. You had a great blog about bad instructions and options on finding help with oh, game that rules. Is a good one. Yep. That's one we should republish. Actually, it's been out for a while, but I don't Definitely. think I need to read. I don't think I need to redo it. Definitely need to republish it because I'm going to skip ahead and say on the wish list post, somebody said they'd like help with bad instructions, and I'm like, "Hey, yep. you missed it. We already talked about that." <laughs> uh, I like that you answer questions sent in by listeners and readers. I love all the various sales posts, especially the Flurio post whenever Amazon is running a sale. And they like that. Good. Uh, they like that. Uh, I sometimes worry that that is the opposite of what yes, people like a, to hear. It's a so. little too much and we lose followers is what I always worry. Yeah. I appreciate the reviews and the way the games are presented during the reviews. They've been fair and they seem to be pretty unbiased beyond the normal biases we all have. Um, yeah, we are critical of games. Yeah. I've got no problem saying I hated that. Yep. <laughs> Someone the might only like reason it, we're overly positive. The only reason I would say we're overly positive in most of our reviews is because we do our research. Yeah. We don't even agree to review a game unless I think I'm going to like it. That's true. We, like, we cherry like pick really what we're going to do. We, we, we say no to a lot of offers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, I love that I'm hearing about new games I'd otherwise never heard of. We, we do tend to try and find the hidden gems too i I find so i think that's cool um not one particular moment but i enjoyed the live interaction and the chat between segments okay must be a live viewer there we go uh the in-depth analysis on games it's helped me to make some good decisions cool now the other thing you gotta remember too is we have a surprising number of people who watch this on twitch Mm -hmm. not live right that's true fact a surprising number Every time I look at it, I'm like, holy cow, a lot of people watched that last episode. <laughs> so they're getting the between stuff. So it's right. not just the people who are necessarily here live. That, that's true. Uh, the deep dives into games and gaming and that you have in-depth reviews. See, again, a lot of the people yeah. seem to like the deep depth. Uh, I don't think what well, we should ever go away from that, but we might want to supplement it. Yeah, yeah. The break, the breakout. Going back I'll, I'll definitely pin. have to look into the breakout possibility. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would never want to drop the in-depth reviews, but maybe segmenting it. Yeah. 
uh, your Cowboy Bebop review because it surprised me that it could be a good game. I haven't <laughs> bought it yet, but I'm looking for a chance to try it now. I liked the family gaming episode where the three of you broke down the logistical challenges of gaming while having children. It was really good. Well, that, yeah, that was a one, fun one. That was a fun that, one. That one we won't be redoing because <laughs> we'll have Kat and Tori on as guests so they can say, no, we just don't game anymore. <laughs> You're always honest and truthful and not always just paying lip service. I hope that's true. I don't know what we aim for. What we yeah. aim for. Speaking of which, Mark at Grand... Never mind. <laughs> uh, just overall great banter back and forth and very well done scripts. Nice. I love the personalities. Yeah. Uh, there was an excellent discussion on theme during a show earlier this year. Yeah, I liked that one. Yeah. Uh, I love how you show how to play any new game that you get. Okay, so that's someone who wants the how to play yep. part. Yep. I like Mo. Okay, <laughs> here we go. The variety of games reviewed and or discussed. <laughs> the information and chemistry. I also like Mo. Um, I really love the episodes that are a summary of your trips to conventions. I've oh. never been... And I would like one day to be able to go to a tabletop convention. And your summaries are wonderfully informative about the activities there, games, and even the local amenities. Ah, see, there you go. Yeah, I've someone. noticed they tend to perform fairly well. So, see, and it's the local amenities organizers. Point. It's the local amenities part that I'm always kind of like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not, we're like, you know, do they really care about what bar we're going to after the you know day? Yeah, well, right. There's nobody else always, apparently. I'm always telling Mo, no one cares what you ate for dinner at the con, and apparently I'm wrong. So, um, someone else says I just really like Mo. You're very popular, I'm sir. I'm just popular, or that's what people put because they knew my name, <laughs> like because because it shows up in my Twitter profile or whatever. The Ghost Betwixt Halloween episode 190. Okay, that's it. That's what it said. Yep. So, I'm just like. Well. Hopefully that was an interesting they didn't one. Buy the, that, they that, didn't buy the. Uh, they didn't buy it because of us. Uh, well, it's not a bad game. It's just you have to know what you're getting into. Yes. Oh God! Well, the Sorry. the, the I, you know, I still disagree. The, the rules were very badly put yes. forward. Here, well, let's put it this way. I don't want to. I don't want to shoot the game down. As soon as we completed our obligation to review the game and felt comfortable reviewing it, we haven't gone back. That's true. We never finished the campaign. That's true. I. I just thought that there was a disparity between what the game was selling and what it yes. gave yeah, on the looks definitely. and everything, right? So that was my biggest complaint there. And I think if you knew what you were getting into, it could be an enjoyable experience. Which is, I think, what we tried to point out in the review. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fair. I, I, I still remember though, like the the rules, the rules in the the starter book, the the three book rules. The set three books you was still bad. needed all it was three a, it was at a really once. Bad yes. organization. Yeah. So this is a good comment because. I know that this is something Sean always talks about cutting out of the show. This person says, I like hearing about what you've been playing lately. So they like the tabletop section. The bellhops tabletop section. Um, the interactions and knowledge shared. Your positive energy and also the ASMR. What have um, we done ASMR? I don't know. <laughs> no idea. Apparently, maybe that's our radio voices. I don't know. The so best part is going to read the next question. Shut it. <laughs> uh, I'd say the best part is being able to get reliable reviews that are actually helpful in making my game purchases. Okay. Your honesty, your openness. Uh, when I saw a, face, a post on Facebook for a game nerd sale that I almost missed and I got some good deals. Mm -hmm. So we got all the happy stuff out of the way. <laughs> okay, I was going to say, I'm like, That's we're going to have to long, summarize some. Right? We still yes. have two more categories okay, here, right? So now, this is what people say they hate. And there's All a whole right. bunch of like, nothing, nothing I can think of. You keep going. You're the best. Yeah, yeah those aren't sure, helpful. no. <laughs> okay, yeah, so I'm I'm skipping all of that. Appreciative, but um, not helpful. Yes. Things I hate. A player who disregards all other players and takes an excessive amount of time in their turn. The arrogant over-optimizers. -op and someone else responded with Donald Trump. So, well, those, fair. Uh, I mean, you can't disagree. Uh, yes. Those are really easy to cut from our show. Done. Yep. Okay. It's done. Okay. <laughs> I skip reviews for games I won't won't play, but I don't hate them. Nah, it's pretty good. No annoyances. Uh, da, da, you guys are the bee's knees. Can't think of anything. No I don't annoyances. like videos. I don't like videos in general. 
All right. I don't like videos. Well, that one should be easy because we really produce easy, content. That's because if you don't go to YouTube or Twitch, ways. you like, don't like see the We videos. have a blog and we have an audio podcast. That one's odd, but okay. The only thing that drives me batty is I only get to listen once a week. I know it <laughs> might not be feasible, but I would love two or three times a week to have a podcast wow. to listen to. No, sorry. No, sorry. Nope, no, nope, sorry. I'm, no. I'm, I, I, I am well, still so considering another podcast, but it won't be on games. So you, yeah, and maybe if, if Sean starts doing short versions of the reviews, maybe we'll set up a second feed. Yeah. It'll still be the same, like, like maybe It'd be the same content. The, over there's yeah. a small chance. Yeah, yeah we're still only doing like one episode a week. But yeah, it, we, it would be one main episode. We have talked about possibly putting the reviews on their own feed. That was one of the things we talked about. Um, and and or even like we even talked about pulling out the uh, as uh, the bellhops tabletop as a segment. But like it'll still be the same content, maybe broken up different. We're not recording more than once a week. Um, now they would have liked this when we were doing Sunday brunch more often. Mm. But even if we pick those back up, they'd only be every other week. And it's still yeah. not a pod. Yeah. And it's they, they specified oh, that's true. You'd have to, to release to. the Sunday brunch as a podcast then. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. We 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 have a hard enough time being here on time, ready to record every Wednesday. So, I wish you could add chapter markers to your episodes. Some Done. of the segments, yes, some chapter of the segments mark. can get quite long, and most pod class players now support chapters. It'd be nice to be able to move between different parts of the episodes. And if there was a segment that we wanted to skip past, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> yes, thank Deanna for that one. Deanna, who had read all these long before we had and had seen that piece of feedback and pushed us to figure it out. So yep. she did most of the work there, getting the, the groundwork done. And then her and Sean, I, I just let them do their own thing. <laughs> I just complained when it didn't work on my phone. That was my job was like, you say it's working, but it's not. Look, yep. that, that's yeah, all we, I did. We played around for a little bit and we finally got something that I think works. No one has complained about it in the last two episodes. So in the last episodes, we even added different images for different chapters. Yeah. Now, if it's not working for you or you're seeing something wonky, by all means, tell us. Yes, please. Please, please. Um, I hate when I see repeated tweets for the same deal. Only one or two is fine. You want to address that one, Mo? Okay, so for one, I have cut back um, on the number of repeated tweets. The big thing is, and I don't want to spread it too far. The, the thing is how people consume. T- I mean, I'm going to stick with Twitter. Twitter was X, whatever you want to call it now. Sorry. Second, trying not to make it friendly, friendly for a minute there. Um. <laughs> The whole thing is a lot of people, I, I don't know if, if it's a gamer ADHD thing where they, they need to see everything and they'll log in and scroll back and look at everything that was said since the last time they were there. That is not how the average person uses Twitter. I somehow have learned that a lot of gamers use it that way. And I used to use it that way. The thing is, if you do that, it's going to seem spammy because you're going to see me tweet the same thing over and over and over again. But that's not how the average person uses it. The average person uses it as a forum, which is what it was designed to be. I don't know if that's where it's still going, but you show up, say, to a coffee shop, and there's a bunch of people hanging around and chatting, and there's someone screaming in the corner, and people are doing stuff, and maybe you scream out your thing, or maybe you go join in a conversation that's going on, and then you leave the coffee shop, and you're done. And you just get that window of time where you experience what was happening on Twitter, and that's how the average user uses it. And that's why we repeat things, because people tend to use them in different groups of time during the day, early in the morning, at lunch, just after school and at night. And we try to repeat the good deals during all those times. Now, what I did is if this does bother you, I tried to put TGD for tabletop gaming deals, repost, TGD repost, all one word, and any reposts on the same day. So if you block TGD repost, you won't see the repeats. So if you are someone who prefers to use Twitter, which is it's a valid way to do it, just not how the average person does it, you can then scroll back and only see one of each. Now, I will say I've cut back on the frequency. We were doing them like every three to four hours. I then went back to about six hours. Mm-hmm. So every six hours, I would tweet things out. And most recently, I've even spaced out more to be like eight hours. And I'm sorry, if you can't deal with the same tweet every eight hours, I don't think that's so and bad. I'm not sure how pertinent it is. Even anymore because we've been talking about dropping Twitter X. Yeah, yeah. Entirely. I actually, I, you so. know, I, I actually blocked actually or the the TDGD repost because of how I use Twitter. I did use Twitter as a, a constant flow of information in front of me all the time. So I yeah, did yours block was that. yours was a different version. It was that you hung out in the coffee shop in yeah, the corner. I lived in the coffee and shop. And you get in the sick corner. of people who leave and come back later, right? <laughs> uh, but I have uh, I have uninstalled X now. So yeah. All right. Uh, the other thing, though, is I'm sorry, I'm going to repeat things on multiple days. 
Like if, if there's a deal and it's still there for 10 days in a row and it, people are still buying it because we can see some of that stuff, I'm going to keep saying it every day. I don't and that's think true, not just for the deals, but also for when we're sharing our content. Like we're yes. going to put it out there more than once and because reiterate it so that folks see it. Necessarily check in every day. So that, that that's a tough one because you want to be seen by the most people and you don't want to annoy the people who you want to see your stuff. So it's hard. Yeah. Um, what I do do is if you do want the stream tabletop gaming or sorry, good geek deals on Facebook, Facebook, I do not repeat content. So you don't have to worry about it. even more. So Reddit, we won't repeat every day. If you go to our slash tabletop gaming deals is now ours. We own it. Um, you'll never see a repeat unless a deal like goes away and then maybe comes back. We just put the stuff up and let it sit there every now and then we go through and delete all the stuff that's dead. And then bump it if it's still live or yeah, you put a comment like it's yeah. still on say it's still this much or whatever. Like if that's how you prefer to consume the deals, your best bets to use the platforms that present it that way. Yeah. I, I would encourage people to check out our Reddit uh, while Reddit has its own problems. It is certainly better uh, for most people, I think than Facebook in many ways. Yeah. Uh, and it is uh, rapidly exceeding X formerly known as Twitter in, <laughs> in other ways. Yeah. But we're also on Blue Sky, Threads, Spoutable, MeWe, Mastodon. Mastodon. Those are the big ones. Dice Camp. Those mm -hmm. are the big ones that I'm Discord. sharing. With you and on. we have our own Discord. I just go to tabletopbellhop.com. Yep. Discord at tabletopbellhop. Or discs are dot tabletopbellhop.com. Okay. Next one. I hate saying this because it might come across as mean spirited, but sometimes Sean's delivery is just too stiff and manufactured for me if that makes any sense. I don't hate it. Tonally, it's fine. It sounds professional. I guess it's just a matter of preference, but I kind of prefer podcasts that seem they sound conversational. I know you guys prepare and write a lot of stuff in events, so there's maybe no way around that. Oh, yeah. No, and, and that's totally fair. And and what that, I, I think that probably comes in most uh, at the beginning of reviews, uh, the intro of episodes where it, especially mm -hmm. where it is it's the same scripted. thing, you know, it, it's super scripted and it's scripted the same every week, more or less. We do mm -hmm. tweak it a little bit. Uh, but that is where I tend to get, oh, yeah, it, it's still a radio voice, but it's a little more automated. I, I, I freely admit that. Yeah. The other one I wonder is if it's reviews you haven't played. Mm -hmm. Then you are basically just reading what was written yep. without any personal feeling behind it. And, and there's less of that part. now. There's less. Yeah. Well, we try to get Sean to play everything at least once. It doesn't always mm -hmm. work. One of our reviews tonight, Sean played. The other, he hasn't. And the other thing we, we have tried to do um, off and on, it kind of hit and miss, is uh, switch it up so that when I haven't played it, it's more me asking, yeah, uh, which right. we know people uh, have, have talked about in the past. We also do sometimes do like we're doing tonight with the less scripted um, ask section. Which I always think sounds better when you guys are unscripted and you're just going back and forth. But Mo, it also tends to go long because you'll yes meander. So yes, I, 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 need, I, I need the bullet points of the scripts, or I just go off. <laughs> I'd, I'd have a six-hour show if I could. <laughs> All right, nope, not really. Well, I guess some fine-tuning. The show could use a bit more personality or some tone. For example, okay. the Bullocks reviewer guy online definitely has a unique style that is his. Bellhop always feels generic. I'm not saying it isn't good, but it could use a bit of flavor. Mm. Well, I mean, balance that out with all the people that said we love your personality. So, yeah, you know, you're not going to be everyone's cup of tea. Like, I will say we're branded, but we're not. Yeah, I don't like, know. We, we don't have that, you know, um, the, you know, there's people out there who do comedy reviews, you know, insert a right. lot of comedy yeah. in the reviews. And there's people out there who, you know, you know, are always standing in front of a bookshelf with a silly hat on or, or whatever. There's, there's a lot of different yeah. people who, who put a specific style into their videos right. where, mm -hmm. you know, no, we're, we're, we are more informational and yeah. less, less about us. Yeah. yeah we're, you're we're, not quirky. I mean, you are quirky. I know y'all, but you're not quirky. <laughs> We're talking heads and not much more. So yeah, and I don't know what I'd do to spruce that up. I can't. Yeah, that's no, what I, I said. I think you have to balance it with the people that said they dig your personality. So yeah, it's just going to be a that, personal that one's rough. Like, like, like I, yeah. I think the personality more comes out when we do mention where we ate and what coffee we're drinking and stuff like that more so than quirky traits. 
Uh, the episodes are often really long. Yeah. yeah, they are. And I can also really catch them live, but that's my fault, not yours. Yeah, I'm hoping a, this, sorry, the segments help with that. Well, and chapters, chapters are definitely, uh, chapters, you know, are, yeah. are going to definitely yeah. benefit. I, I mean, to be honest, I agree. Um, as someone who listens to a variety of different podcasts, um, I know there are people who love our podcast and love all the content we put in. But I've said in the past that I wouldn't necessarily, li- I would probably skip check sections of this podcast uh, mm-hmm. were I purely a listener and not a viewer because there is content here that doesn't necessarily impact me. The reviews are great. Yeah. The ask is great. I personally don't care what, you know, what game someone played, uh, you know, in, in general. So, right. Um, slightly shorter episodes, maybe 45 to 60 minutes. So another person saying we go long. Yeah. And that's like half. That's the, yeah, that's half hour. And 145 anymore. is what I consider a good episode at this point. You should bring know. in. Sorry, go ahead. Mark. What I would love to hear from those people is what we should drop. Hmm. Like shorter reviews. Do you not want the description to play that switch? The problem is I know someone who loves every segment. <laughs> right. No one I don't know anyone has loved. Maybe we should drop the fan feedback at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Though to me, that's like the important, hey, we're interacting with people. Look, we pay attention to your comments. But like, it's, really, it's probably the least informative part of the show. I enjoy it on some other podcasts. I am not removed from it enough to have an opinion on ours. Sometimes I think it goes a little longer than it needs to. I've told you before that you could drop people saying, I just like this, or it's, it's too generic. Sometimes you read out stuff that is too generic just to give someone a shout out, which they may appreciate, well, that's, but it's that's not really said, adding anything to in. the conversation, right? And we've so tweaked that a little bit. Could, yeah, yeah I've dropped you have most, tweaked those. The only time I throw I those in now, the only time I throw those in is if I have other comments on the same game. I'll throw those in with the other more yeah, there's a couple comments. times where I've read off like six comments in a row and and, and one or two of those will be yeah. the we love this game. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, you should bring in outside voices. I, we talk about it regularly. We, we do. <laughs> we, we talk do. about it. Um, yeah, we've definitely talked about that a lot. Uh, nothing springs to mind. The deal page could be updated a little more frequently to That's remove true. redundant items. But I do understand that is a mammoth effort. Yeah, we try and keep on top of yeah, it. Guys. Unfortunately, That's all I can say. Unfortunately, all of our deal stuff is manual. Like there, there are a couple websites we use to like track good deals and to find out about deals. But like everything on our page is done in WordPress, basically mm-hmm. in HTML in some cases, and manually tweeted out and and manually copy pasted to multiple sites. We're not we're not using Hootsuite or any of those. Yeah. Um, yeah. And 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 to go through our list of whatever like thirty five different stores to find the hot deals of the week takes time. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, I get that, Rod. I'm gonna just stop and call it a couple things from the chat that have come uh-huh. up because we have some fans actually talking. So like again, Math Guy Dave, if he listens to one segment, it's the what we've been playing, and I don't think we can drop that. Plus, in a way. That's where we can get the short reviews in of the stuff that we don't have the time to spend a whole episode Our quick on. Thoughts about it. Yeah. You get some quick thoughts in there. Um, I think maybe we should say less. Like, and let, yeah, we played it on the weekend. It was pretty good. And and like share a first thoughts and maybe a third thoughts and then the review. Maybe not quite as much. Um, Roger talks about how he basically pops in now and then. But um, the one I liked was a lot of people saying they like longer format. Um, sometimes we sound like a really scripted voice party. Voicey party, radio voicey party. Um, one of the ones I liked here, though, is maybe wait and do feedback and comment episodes. So we do something like this. I don't know. Well, one don't, actually, uh, one thought might be if when we do an AMA episode, preface it with that. suggestions. So we do suggestions and AMA in every, you know once a month or once every however however often. Uh, those mm-hmm. might go well together. Yeah. That's possible. Uh, Roger pointed out game reviews are long. If I don't don't, don't like the game, which Very that true. one we can't really fix. Well, the comments oh, the part, comment is, really part is really scripted. We tried it actually. It, if, if last week still sounded scripted, we failed because I think it was last week's where it, it wasn't scripted at all. Sean read them off and I replied. Yeah, to them. yeah. Um, someone else is saying they hate the long intros. So we've had they, a couple people complain about that, and I. How how do you not intro your like for any new listener like some uh, 
we've tried to cut it down, and then I find once we cut it down, it starts to grow. So I and have then we to say, to cut it back. I for me, um, there are a number of podcasts I listen to who are two and a half minutes before they yeah, get before to the they monkey. Get going. And yeah. we're thirty seconds. You know, I got thirty seconds of music. Uh, we do a, less than a minute of intro, and then we're into the suggestions. They might not mean at the beginning. Like maybe they mean in each segment. Like sometimes when you're leading into review, you're pretty long in that lead in of that game and describing the game and why we're why we how we picked it up at Origins and why we're reviewing it and that that kind of thing. I don't know. I don't have the person here to ask them what they mean, but it says intros plural. Mm. Yeah, it's hard to say. I know like we have trimmed the front end a bit and and I find we are super light, especially because we don't have ads. Like, you know, normally we do mm-hmm. like, you know, three ad reads or something if we were a, a yes. big money podcast uh right up front. But uh, you know, we don't uh, have any for anyone that. live, there is the lead up before we get recording. And but well, I'm yeah. assuming that's not what this is. Yeah, that's Probably not that's not, not no. intro. That's literally just the sausage. Yeah. Uh, the sausage making sometimes runs a bit long, but it can also be quite funny at times. Yes. Oh, someone yes. said that. So, uh, the only thing I, I don't know. like so much is the dead air. Sometimes during the coffee break, it throws off the pace. Like I, I think this is a very pertinent one. A gag reel or highlights from past shows might be more appropriate to cover the downtime. I wouldn't even mind a commercial or two instead of just dead air. It's not really that bad, but the podcast always seems to stall out at this point, and that is true. We do. So that, that's people, people who come there. in and watch in in the future, like in the future. Those are people watching. Yeah, it's that's gotta be someone that, who watches people Twitch watching later. on Twitch. That's people watching VOD. But that's on people Twitch. when we're not not just VOD on Twitch. That's also people that are here live. Like a lot of people leave live at that point, and it could just be yeah. that there is a lot of dead air in the coffee break, and we're kind of just, you know. I, to be honest, there isn't that much dead air. Like normally, like, but well, yeah, I try to. I'm, I'm, I'm. I admit, I'm, I'm get trying to get better. You but, have got better, Sean. But when it Mo used goes to be away, I try to check. Yeah, that's fair. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know on that one. Yeah, yeah they, 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 they think people leave because they're not interested after. in the reviews. Um, I can't, I can't always make the podcast. I hate that you conflict with my schedule, blah, blah, blah. There's a bunch of those. Yeah, that's fair. All right. That's going to happen no matter where we put the show. Yep. So we should probably address this. I hate that you promote Amazon pricing rather than encouraging more people to shop at their FLGS. Not everyone has an FLGS. Not all FLGSs are friendly. And the majority of our audience is American and Amazon is where most people shop. Now, what we have tried to do is promote more non-Amazon online game stores, but again, they're in the U.S. Um, I can't appeal to everyone because I don't know your local game stores, and I'm not going to talk about a game store in Arizona and then deals there for the people in that area. Like By talking about the big stores, Miniature Market, Cool Stuff, Inc., uh, Noble Knight, and Amazon, we're going to hit the most people. Then there's the fact that We have affiliates and affiliates are what pay for what let this be a full time job. People talked about the fact that they appreciate the fact that we get to do this full time and dedicate time to it. Well, Amazon helps that happen. And unfortunately, that's that's where the money's coming from. If we can change that, you know, get a sponsor, get more Patreon patrons. I don't know, maybe run a Kickstarter or something. Then we can kind of back off on it. But it's it's the it's it's the moneymaker. But and as we have said in the past, if you're local game store is friendly and you play there and you get something out of it existing, then by all means support them. Please support them when you go out there, buy stuff from them. And we have said that, you know, and we've said it repeatedly and we'll probably say it again in the future. Like I'm not going to sit there and every Amazon ad say, well, if if you don't have a local game store, check this out. Right. It's, it's, I don't know. I, I, I am all for supporting local game stores that, that are worth supporting. If they do more than just sell you a game, then yes, you should support them. If if they provide any service, if they give the community a place to play, if they're they're actively involved in the community, they're worth paying more than MSRP. If they give you a place to play and they don't charge you to use their tables, or mm-hmm. if you've got you know a message board where you can find players, all of that stuff. We have an entire episode. I'm putting the F in FLGS. If they do any of that stuff, then yes, they're worth supporting. Yeah, the fact but I'm not is- going to like on an account like tabletop gaming deals be constantly like. Oh yeah, don't uh, here's some great deals, but don't use them. Go uh, like shop at your store. Yeah, the fact of the matter is, it's on you to support your local friendly name, uh, friendly neighborhood gaming store. 
The fact that someone is promoting a deal on Amazon doesn't suddenly make your friendly local gaming store evil. If you no. know your local gaming store, great. We appreciate you uh, supporting them. They, I'm sure, appreciate you supporting them. But we can't tell you what's the sale in Boise, Idaho. We don't have that ability. If we knew yeah. all the local, friendly local gaming stores and all their deals, we well, no, we probably wouldn't be able to promote them. But the fact of the matter is we don't. So we promote what we can promote and what helps that keep this show on the air. Uh, and we never say, don't shop at your friendly local gaming no. store. We just say Heck there no. are other options out there. Yeah. And I do um, share the local stuff, but I share that on my Mo Tuzano Facebook account, not my tabletop gaming deals account. Yeah, because I don't want to share too much local stuff with the podcast, which is, I mean, 90% of our listeners are in the States, so they're obviously not here in Windsor. Um, and then Roger in the, the chat is asking about Canadian deals. There it, just aren't any. Canada sucks. Go, go to 401 Games. <laughs> Buy from them. Done. Yeah. <laughs> Or support your local stores. Like, like or game bliss is pretty good, you know. But there's, it, there's, eh. All right, it, can you? Am, Amazon one? no longer works in chapters. Um, at, at sometimes, like they have to have a sale. Like the, the, actually, aren't. the secret is, and they have a relatively limited selection, but it's surprising. Is Best Buy Canada weird? Yes. Weird amount of games you can get there. Yeah, Anyways, I'm gonna go back to this. Um, this one puzzled me. And Sean and I already talked about this one and we couldn't figure it out. Can you sort Apple podcast episodes from newest to oldest instead of in ascending order? I have seen other podcasts on my iOS podcast app automatically list newest episodes to oldest. Otherwise, I always have to scroll from 2018 to get to the present day episodes every single time. So I this confuses me because when I go to Apple podcasts, we are sorted that way. Yeah, so I, I think no we clue. fixed this. I, I, I think that... There was a problem and we fixed it and it probably coordinated somewhere around the time that that person was doing things. Cause I remember, cause Mo, I think was the one who pointed out to me that, um, at one point oh, and there was so a, maybe their complaint, maybe an older, we had made it. a, there, we had made a decision when we first set up the podcast and we, we checked the box and never went back. And in the past, within the past six months, and I can't remember when other than that, I remember someone saying, hey, why is this like this? And I went, oh, well, we made a decision way back when, but hey, I can uncheck this box now and it's all good. And and mm -hmm. so that has, I believe, happened now uh, for that. Uh, if not, then, I, you know, that one check box was the only thing I could do. And and that. Yeah, I, right that now I, I go to Apple Podcasts says, how do you do fellow kids? October 3rd. Yeah. So I, I'm, right. I'm pretty sure we've and, already and solved that's that one. incognito. So, yeah. That shouldn't be any of my preferences. So check if mark that on didn't that one. fix it, maybe that's something you set. Whoever's using, yeah, but they're saying they, that it works for other episodes. Yeah, no, or else I, I would I, think it's something. Yeah, I, I think we've already got to check on that one. Now, to be fair, I do not have an Apple device. Maybe if mm -hmm. you're using mm -hmm. Apple Podcasts, no, I tested that. I grabbed the okay. kid's iPad oh, and tried it. So, yeah. all right, that's where all so those downloads I'm, came from. <laughs> I'm not a podcast guy, but I might listen once in a while if you were to share them on your deals page more often. So I, I retweet them now and then. I I, I don't know. I, I always worry. We've kept that, them kind of separate. We've been talking yeah. about it a lot this episode, but mostly we've kept the two things kind of separate. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. We kind of like to me, it's like two different verticals, and I don't think they overlap all that often. Like mm -hmm. every now and then as tabletop bellhop on my socials, there'll be something like today's deal and Joan of Arc that I'll retweet or I'll quote wild, tweet because yeah. it's a $300 game you can get for 50 bucks. Or, or we're telling people there's a good deal on Disney sidekicks, but you best go read our review first. Yes, exactly. Right. I, I've kind of overlapped it. I also feel like, and I know they're both my accounts, but if every time I share a game, I then quote tweet it with one of our reviews feels mm -hmm. a little spammy yeah. too. So, so I don't know. That, one, that one's a rough one. If you I, I don't really know. want the best of both worlds, discord.tabletopbellhop.com. Yeah. Yeah, and, and our newsletter, if you got today's newsletter that went out on, on Wednesday, we did include the two big Amazon sales we're tracking. Um, what I realized today is we need to include more of the non-Amazon stuff on there. Mm, like true. we're good at we pointing out the big Amazon sales. This just goes to another comment about uh, promoting Amazon. But like Miniature Market had a fantastic sale last week, 25% off um supers games but that's stacked on the existing discounts 
We probably should have thrown something like that in there, too. Hmm. All right. So now we're in the wish list. This oh, that was it for negative? Like. Oh, that's actually... That, that was, there was a that... lot of people just saying, I dig you, and I didn't read them all. So all right. That was it oh, that for was... negative. Was, was there internet, an overall... That was impressive. Did... Yeah. Is there an overall theme to the negative? Too long seemed to be. Too long was repeated a couple times. Uh, people saying that you you your delivery is flat and you have no personality, but <laughs> that's yeah. We got an awful lot of we love their personalities. So yeah. um, I don't know. We, okay. we, we keep we should switch to less scripted. We we say it all the time. I just I can't do it. I'm a writer. I, I started as a blogger. I get into those show notes and I just get going. <laughs> I prefer it when you do billet points and are unscripted. I think it sounds way better when you guys aren't reading. And Sean sometimes gets uh, distracted and loses where he is in the prompt and will take a second to pick it up. I notice watching, but that just might be me because I know what's going on. And also, I know I can edit those out in the uh, video <laughs> in the podcast. You're like, I don't it's care. Funny. I can just edit that out. Well, no, we know we're not. Sorry, Eggman just pointed yeah, out. You're not going to be like everyone's everyone. Company. Well, that's definitely yeah. true. You, you can look at our subscriber count compared to some other channels. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, I always felt like that we have an audience and the audience we have really enjoys what we do. I just would like to grow that audience, if, especially if it just takes some minor tweaks, like trying to shorten the episodes a little more, maybe being a little less scripted. So far, that's my take on so far based on what we've heard. All right. You need to review Unmatched. I was here for a couple days. Yeah, we stole a copy you, and brought it home by mistake. It. Yeah, if, uh, sorry, Ian. I brought home my my daughter didn't know which game. My daughter doesn't know our game collection as well as I do, <laughs> and she packed the, our bags at the end of the last barbershop bar game event. We did bring home uh, someone else's copy of Ian's uh, or of Ian's or Ian's copy of Unmatched, but then he needed it for the collectors con that was last weekend. So I actually dropped it off at his house. So it was here in those three days. I guess we should have sat down and played it. I would like to see more solo gaming content. I feel like that one's probably not going to happen as we're not big solo yeah, gamers. Unfortunately, yeah. there are podcasts better suited and, better, and creators better suited to that because uh, it's just not our jam. What what we probably should do is do an episode on our favorite solo games, which would be very short, like maybe our top five <laughs> solo games, and then like links to the people who do a good job of it because that is one I feel we should defer to. To mm -hmm. people and that's not the first it. time we've had people ask us about it. So you're right. We should probably be like, here's our referral over here. Like, our like, first like, interview. What I'm thinking is that way there's something on the blog. So the next time it comes up, we can at least point them to it. Mm -hmm. That that way, like, I don't, I, of course, you get the problem with people pod fading or whatever. But there are a lot of really good solo podcasts and YouTube channels right now. We're going to find mm -hmm. one and interview them. Yeah, we'll do, we'll bring them on for a, a, well, yeah, a solo that, episode. It, yeah. <laughs> we've talked about that enough times is we should be, we should do. Once a month, we should probably be doing a bring on bring on an expert episode. And hey, look, it, it actually looks pretty good on camera. And that yeah, took me I got to say now that took now me almost no time. So you have to figure out a way to get the the sides to be equal or to yeah, have yeah. the guest be bigger. Well, again, we didn't we didn't we didn't actually test this until the yes. lobby episode of the ep yes. during the episode. Yes. So quickly, I'm pretty quickly good, I'm pretty together. happy with how it turned out as it is. Yep. All right. Uh, I would like to see more Star Wars and Disney Lorcana. And I will say there's about three other people asking for Lorcana content. So yeah, we we kind of we kind of got stuck behind the eight ball on that one. We did not get any Lorcana. No, but we I don't think we would have got any Lorcana had we asked. Mm, so, you never know. We didn't ask. Yeah, no, we did not. Uh, I'm not sure what Star Wars. They want. Yeah, I don't Star know. Wars. No, Star there's Star Wars. Wars. Star like Wars honestly, Wars? I would love to review the Star Wars deck building game. I keep hearing more and more mm -hmm. good things about it. Well, we even though they're asking about Lorcana, that's probably the Star Wars they're leaning yes. towards. And, and then there's, a, I would love to try the Star Wars, the Clone Wars that's based on Pandemic. Uh, the problem is the people who own the Star Wars licenses aren't people we are currently working with. I would like to see how to play videos and live play videos. Now, I'm going to say you're unlikely to see how to play videos. Yes. And we're going to go back up to that solo gaming content and say we can send you over to better yeah, people. There, there are some experts at how to play videos that, that we strongly recommend. Paul Grogan, so um, Rodney got Smith. Great, great people out there who, who we adore and whose content we devour when we need how to play videos. So trying to, to compete with them would just be kind of silly, especially yes. given the uh, the level of production that they put into and the love they put into that that genre of videos. Yeah. 
And I'm yeah. sorry, I don't have the patience Rodney Smith does to record a three hour video and make one minor mistake and re-record the whole thing because he does it all in one flip and take. Because oh, that's don't know. wild. <laughs> there was something, some brand new game came out and he had to put out an apology and he re-uploaded the entire video and re I'm like, oh my God. Like I get it. I, I applaud him for his professionalism and there's a reason mm -hmm. he does this for a living. Um but the other thing is, one of the Bellhop's rules is you're always going to play extreme. Like, we do that too often. Um, That's just true. Watch I would be Haven mortified if play. we were teaching people how to play. We, we had a dude in the chair who corrected us at least three times every single chapter, every episode. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we're not that good at, at following the rules exactly. Um, I had thought about doing more of like a shorts kind of like Mo teaches you to play, but they'd be about as detailed as our current rule overviews. Mm -hmm. They would not be how to plays. I don't I don't want to be responsible for someone playing a game wrong. Um, yeah. Actual plays I want to do. We were, we were working yeah. there. People we had a new studio. Play videos, we, we were yeah. getting there. We just had to figure out how to turn the one camera to show us instead of the table. Like like we were as close as you could be like like. By January next year, we would have been doing actual plays again. And and I plan to do it more in a, hell, let's record this tonight. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm sorry if that's not family friendly. Heck, let's record this tonight. Um, we'll get there, though. I mean, once we get the basement repaired from the water damage, we'll we'll get it back set up. And yeah, we'll, eventually we'll get it back, get back set up. Like, we, we totally planned on that because we know our actual plays did extremely well. I would like to see a compact list of all 200 plus topics. Well, Done. guess what? I'm I'm working on it. I should yes. drop the link. It's uh, tabletopbellhop.com slash answers. I think it's not done yet, but I am doing that. Well, what we do have is a list of every podcast and the title. So you kind of get that, but not quite because in our titles, we used to be a little more. Yes. Well, further with down our here, if I scroll a bit, there's somebody that's asking for exactly that, which I did do. But yeah, um, some of the stuff Deanna's had for months, so she's been able to play with <laughs> Month, I've been enough. I've been working. Yes. yes. Um. I always love when TTRPGs get the focus. For instance, your deep dive into supers games. Maybe <laughs> yeah. you could take a dive into a different genre. Oh man, I would love to do more TTRPG content, but we need to play more TTRPGs. That's what. What other genre could you possibly do? Sean's obsessed with supers. Yeah, I need. I, know, to, I need to do obsession. cyberpunk RPGs. Could you? Um, I've got one. I've only actually I have own one right now. Okay. Technically, yeah. it's more like highlighting a, a a great story or experience in a friendly local game store submitted by your viewers would be cool. Um, it would be Dice cool. Tower used to do that. Eric Summer used to read them off. He had I forget what they called them. Tales Heck, of Amazement. Video submissions. <laughs> Videos. There we go. And then then that's what we can put in the coffee breaks. Is we'll okay, people coffee video, about how video much reviews they love their... of their friendly local gaming store. Absolutely, that would be awesome. Ended up a little, uh, you know, five minute, ten minute video that, that just kind of rolls while while we're drinking coffee and getting refilling. There you go. Just we got to tell them to record it horizontal, not vertical. Mm. <laughs> ah, whatever. I can make it work. We're not TikTok. <laughs> yeah. I just uh, put up three at a time and let people, uh, you know, fade the voice, go. fade the sound between. The caffeine. No, I'm, I'm up for highlighting friendly local games. Oh, I just yeah, don't know if sure. it fits with the regular flow. Yeah. Uh, if people actually submitted that content, I'd be happy to highlight. Yeah. It. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. I would love to see convention wish lists and top lists. I feel like everyone else is doing that already. Right. Like I have seen so many Essen preview, what we plan to buy at Essen, what we're going to play at Essen, games we can't miss at Essen lists in the last two weeks. Well, and we, like, did, yeah. that, we did that on Sundays uh, when we were doing brunches. Yeah. We would generally talk about all the big lists of games that were coming out at the next con. Uh, we rarely ever finished them because those lists yes. were ridiculously There's so huge. many. But, you know, we did talk about that stuff, uh, but it, it really doesn't fit into our podcast format. It was yeah. more suited to Sunday brunch. Mm -hmm. uh, that one, like if enough people ask for it, maybe we could put something on there. Like like I, the, the Secret Cabal has a, has a section that I don't know what they call it, but like the hype where they mm -hmm. interview each of the hosts and go, what are you hyped about? But I'm like, for me, for the next six months, it's going to be games we brought back from Origins. Like, we just right. don't, we don't play 80, 90 new games a month like some of the other podcasters do, which is a lot due to the fact because we try to play games a lot more frequently than other people do or a lot more times before we share our final thoughts. So it just doesn't fit in. 
Like, I, I don't know. I, that one, that one's rough. I don't, I, I couldn't even tell you. I haven't done the research to even know a single game that's releasing at Essen. Yeah. Like it just, yeah. I, I'm not about the new hotness. I haven't been, I'm excited about the games behind me that are up there and I'm excited about this pile over here and I'm frustrated. I don't get to unbox them. I will also say we kind of did that during COVID with some of the online conventions that yes. uh, we attended and that content fell totally flat. Like no one cared yeah. about it. Yeah, I did. We did the, what, the Gen Con Aw summer showcase. Aw shucks. We did Aw shucks online. We did two, I, Renegade felt like they were doing a Renegade con every other weekend yeah. for a bit there. We did some of those and we talked about the games and yeah, they all never did that well. All right. I would like a topic on how to find new people to game with. I like playing with other people, but I'm not the most social. I live in a big city. I'm sure there are opportunities, but I just don't know where to look. So An episode just... with suggestions on and new game groups would be fun. I thought, I thought we did that. Done that. I'm pretty We've sure we did. We've done an episode on like public play events and how to build and host public play events. But how have we really talked about how you personally go out and find a new game group? Yeah. Eh, that, I don't know. Maybe maybe not. Just I, I feel like that's something we talked about, but maybe it was an AMA or just yeah. part of another episode because I... I felt like that was uh, felt like I've talked about that. We we did forming a game group specifically. Was, that I've been re going no, back but to it was about lately. forming your own gaming club, right? Yeah, like mm. it was it was about forming a gaming society, whatever. Which like forming kind of different forming than, a gaming community. That's the word I'm looking yeah, for. Not just said, like three people to play with, right? Right. But we gave all the than, tips on how to find people and how to hook yeah. up and where. The only thing is, we also talked about finding a venue. Yeah, like, so like, I, to think, me, I think that one thoroughly covered that yeah. as part of the other topic. We could revisit it, but like to be fair, that's just one throw it in the question list. Like, like oh, yeah, to me, yeah. that's just a question. But I'm just reading them out to you. And they want more RPGs again. <laughs> RPGs. Could you please review Heat Pedal to the Metal? Lots Would of people like are to. talking about it. And I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks. I well, love Sean's it. Been playing it. I played it. I've been playing it on Arena. Board Game Arena. It uh, they it dropped on Board Game Arena. I've played uh, the demo and then I started playing. I've played like seven different solo games because I really enjoy it. Those racing games, um, uh, both Heat Pedal the Metal and what was the one I got you hooked on for a little while? Um, Rally Man. Rally Man. Mm -hmm. uh, both were fantastic games. Uh, definitely worthwhile. And, and the solo play on Heat is actually really well done. There you go. So mm -hmm. There are more solo content and... Oh, two check marks. There you check go. Marks there, no. uh, I need continued coverage of sales. Maybe okay. highlight any major ones, especially if you find enough to reach free shipping. Yeah, we're on that. Yep. Uh, more features on indie tabletop games. I wouldn't know who that is. No. Um, yeah. No. I, well, RPGs is definitely a thing. That one's hard. I, I, we have some. We brought some. From Origins, Birds of a Feather is a great example of an indie tabletop game that we featured recently. It's true. Um, yeah. We have Bah Humbug in the pile to go through, which is a, a a a set of cards based on the 12 Days of Christmas with 12 different games to play with them. And if you pick up the game every Christmas, they send you a new game, a mm -hmm. new way to play with new, like, I don't know if it's going to have new cards or anything. So there's another indie one we're highlighting. Um, Distilled is technically an indie game. That is as Paverson Games' first game ever published. We've got that. You can see it over my shoulder. So Seas of cry. Havoc. Hmm? Seas of Havoc. Yeah, Seas of Havoc. First ever thing. From, well, that's not their first. They've, they've got about five or six. Uh, I, that's the other problem. What's indie to you? Mm. <laughs> right? uh, indie Boards and Cards and Stronghold Games has six employees. Are they indie? They make Terraforming Mars. One of the, like, And they just made a ridiculous amount of money on Kickstarter. Mm. because they're localizing other people's games like what's indie anymore maybe I'll, maybe like, i'll have like, to do an episode that's just uh supers games from itch.io there you go like rpgs is a little easier indie generally means like one person publishing their own game for board games like like we're, we're like i guess i know asmodee's not indie and 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 anyone in that group probably isn't but like even part of asmodee is plat hack games which i think is two people like it, mm -hmm. it's really hard to talk about Indie games, like what, what's indie and what's not. But like we, I think we do a good job of highlighting these, but we don't call them out as indie, right? Like like the holiday hijinks game we're going to review tonight is from Grand Gamers Guild, 
It's designed by one person. The art is done by the same person. It's a one person job who makes 18 card games and Grand Gamers Guilds distributes them. As far as I'm mm-hmm. concerned, that's an indie game. Oh, truly it is. And uh, I hate to be, I, I hate being negative, but we are pitched a lot of indie games that we turn down because they're not complete games. People yes. want to send us prototypes to test out and we don't do <laughs> that anymore. Yeah. I the just number of a Hellbringer, Sean's favorite game of last year. The number of games, however, that are indie and just aren't ready to ship yet is not quite unfortunately, ready for prime time. Uh, just unfortunately a real problem. And that eats into our time to do content that is ready. And, and so we have to balance. And, that. and honestly, it's, it's, do we talk about a bad game? That's kind of fun. If you talk to the d- designer and figure out how to play it and check all the threads on board game geek, or would you rather be like, Oh my God, you got to check out the still that plays so smooth. The theme so well integrated. What would you rather hear about? Right? Like I'd rather talk about the completed game. We had a great time with than the game. We muddled through to get to work and might've had some fun with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it's right. hard. I like the way you guys structure your reviews. Keep up the great work. So that's another vote for your in depth. Again, reviews. I wish I knew if that was video, audio, or written. Yeah. I want a compact list of all your episode titles. Done. That one's done. Goblin Slayer TTRPG. They want I've a review of, of that, I, I, I assume. So it's, it's based on JRPGs. I've heard of it too, but I'm like, that's it. That's the full yeah, feedback. They, they want us to read. I, uh, what I don't know is, do people care? Like, I could do more read reviews. Are those actually useful? Like, I think they're useful for the box sets because box sets are people thinking about getting into a game. They mm-hmm. want to know what's in there. Like, I think right. there's, but like, but how I, much I, use is there for how a much read use review? is there me telling you the basic system in a chapter by chapter breakdown of the One Ring? Like, really? Yeah. So I don't know. Like I can, well, re- I, I could review many RPGs, uh, anything from free league. I, I have PDFs of them. I could review them, but I don't know. I, I feel like if I haven't sat down and played it at the table, I've moved away from the RPG read reviews. We mm-hmm. used to do a lot more of them just to kind of have some RPG content, but I'm like, why like having some RPG content shouldn't be at the expense of having good RPG content. Right. No, I agree. And I'm not, sh- I'm not sure how much value there is there. So the next comment is, I would love to get another detailed RPG review. Maybe Marvel on full release. See, I've been tempting to buy that just to do a review. Mm-hmm. Like well, for Will is poking me in the Discord to, to buy it. And I'm <laughs> the problem is, I know where the game went. It's, it's yeah, not it's a game not I would play. Yeah, um, exactly. So I, I don't, again, as we were talking about things, I don't want to give a negative review to a game that's just not for me. It, mm-hmm. It's probably a fine game for the people who are looking for that particular style of game, uh, right. but it's it's just not what I was looking for. So more power to them. All right, maybe once every month or two, you should find a game that has a high review rating on BGG, but doesn't have many reviews, and give an opinion on it and tell us where it can be purchased. Hmm. That that had to be like a featured segment, right? Like yeah. I don't, I don't high review rating, but not high review rating, but not many reviews. Sometimes. Okay. So that's tricky because sometimes when there's a high review rating, but not many reviews, it's because they had their best friend and their mom pop in a couple numbers on there. Or there's <laughs> kickstart or the Kickstarter. Yes. Uh, you yeah. Know, yeah. Bias. I don't, I, I get it, but not all at once. I, I would say a lot of what you see on board game geek that has a high review, but low review count Tends to be pre-release Kickstarters, yeah, um, or, or, it's or people reviewing stuff before they played so, the game. So we can't tell you where to buy them because often you can't. Yeah, that one's that one's hard. Okay, this one confused me a bit. Perhaps there would be a way to structure your long-form podcast to be able to release it not as one long video on YouTube, but as separate videos. We do. Don't we already do that? Yeah, we do. Yeah, but I'm, I'm just saying they must And, and it continues. That. You probably would need to add a bumper in front of each video, which could be a bit too much work. Sometimes the length can be a little prohibitive, and occasionally there may be more than one topic I'm not interested in. So we already we added chapters. everything That's the big into... Thing. 
So if we you're have, on YouTube, hit the little arrow thing, and then they show up on the side, and then just yeah, skip so the section. We have chapters like. on the podcast. We break out the reviews and the ask into separate videos on their own. Yeah, really, that's the only thing we don't is the pre-ask and the you know the post yeah we don't review. break we don't break out the feedback and we don't break out the bellhops tabletop. Yeah. I don't think anyone wants our Patreon shout out right? as a standalone segment. Um, yeah, we like I I was a little confused by this one just because I'm like I kind of felt like we were doing that. So if you were the person who gave this feedback, maybe you can clarify if there's something we could do more. Um, we did used to put the ask or sorry, the bellhops tabletop out. The problem with the bellhops tabletop for YouTube is like you, you have to it's like hard to SEO. SEO what, what do I put a title when I'm talking like, yes, this week could probably work because we're only really talking about three games. Mm -hmm. But like the average week when I'm running a game event, I'm talking about 10, 20 games sometimes. Like and again, that would be, you know, second channel. That that's the sort of that that would be like second channel content if, if we, we were talking about where stuff where some people might like it that's great but it's not our primary content yeah um, but like what would I uh, I don't know that that one's rough like I, I'm sure Sean could but then it's more work for him to break out the ta bellhops tabletop but like mm -hmm. what's left after that like that's the only thing I could see possibly breaking out and I just I don't know if there's enough demand for that that's that's why again. So, so while we're going through this, like if you're listening at home and you're like, yeah, that or no, don't please let us know. Yeah, we'd love <laughs> Mo at more feedback or Sean at tabletopbellhop.com. We're happy to take your feedback, even if there isn't a uh, giveaway associated. Yes, yes. Or heck, you can even write Deanna at tabletopbellhop.com specifically if you want to rant at me about the website. Yep. All right. Go back to some of the earliest topics and revisit them or update them. So we've been trying to do that more on the blog. I can never decide. Um, it depends, right? So, so some people have told us, like, revisit this topic. And I read the old version. I'm like, but we nailed it. Like, I, I wouldn't have anything to add. And even someone like just just the other day, I had someone on Blue Sky who referenced one of our articles. So thank you for that. Who said, I'm looking for engine building games that do this. I found this awesome list and there's great games on it, but it doesn't do the one thing I want. I want this. So I provide them another 16 games. I'm like, I could have done that. But like reading through the original list, like like if I didn't reference my original, I would have listed, I think, 10 out of the same 16 <laughs> games mm -hmm. as, as my most recommended engine building games. Like, like Gizmos is still a great gateway. So, yeah, maybe Century Spice Road's a little better than Splendor, but Splendor can still be on the list. And Russian Railroads is still fantastic. So I don't know that, that it's 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 hard. For the advice topics, I feel that not much has changed. Like how to yeah. start a game group is how to start a game group. When it's a recommendations post, like the best 10 things for Halloween, well, new games are coming out all the time that we're checking out. So those ones, I think you can. Better, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the next comment is, I'd like to see a revisit of some of your very early topics. Like yeah. from the first 50 shows, go back gateway, and see if anything has to changed. Catan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's see, gateway to Catan? Catan, I don't know. Would I, would I change? That was one that I think we republished. Where we republished the um, "If you like Catan, here's your next step" games, where I basically broke Catan into three main things, which was uh, take that trading and rolling for resources, like generating resources. Mm -hmm. And I went through that list, and I'm like, yes, I changed a couple games on the list with, with some newer stuff, but I'm like, the overall feel was the same. I don't know. Like maybe we just forget we ever talked about it before, and if we recommend the same games, we do it. I know other podcasts do this. I would it, like it to see might help to, to if we're like, oh, we don't have time for a topic. Let's revisit that. Mm, that's true. Uh, I would like to see Glenmore 2 play through with Chronicles. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'll back it up. Okay. That's Here, cool. Here's something quick. another Wait. podcast I listen to is offered, and, and I'm wondering if we should offer it sometimes. If you want that bad enough, send us a copy of the game and we'll do it. Mm. But I don't know if I want to open that up that wide. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we, mm. like I said, we, there are already a lot of games that people try to send us that we turn down. So um, I don't know about that. Um, so I was about to say, though, you know what? For easy shows to do in November, no, it'll be Revisit Everything November. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've yet to see an episode on Remember themed... November. Yes, there you go. I've yet to see an episode on themed games, uh, specifically games themed in India, the United States, Canada, etc. Yeah, we definitely talked about game themes. Yeah, but we yes. haven't done we haven't done like country, we haven't done regional games. Regional no. games. All we, games we did, all in them, Canada. All the, all the Canadian did. monopolies. All the American yeah. monopolies. All no, the, thank uh, you. <laughs> uh, best sci-fi games. More Lorcana, please. Uh, Crisis at Steamfall. 
Don't know that one. Yeah. This is Crisis at Steamfall game. No, what we could some... do. I wonder. Mm-hmm. I want. No, we. Here, this might actually be useful. Is something on the web page that was request a review and people put in games. Mm. And I don't know how you filter it so it like gets different capitalizations and silly things like that. And if a game gets enough votes, we review it. So Crisis at Steamfall was a Kickstarter that uh, from Beautiful Disaster Games, uh, 2019. Yeah, and, and, and to be fair, I actually get a lot of people asking me for reviews on Kickstarter games, but we don't tend to back Kickstarters. And a lot of those big Kickstarters don't end up in available. retail. Yeah. So though they're hard. <laughs> like I, I've had a lot of people ask my opinions on specific Kickstarters, and I'm like, I'm sorry. I, I have backed away from backing Kickstarters. I have been burned. I know a lot of people out there. It's, it's not like it used to be when Kickstarter first started, but I've been burned on Kickstarter a few times. And even more so, um, games tend to be cheaper in retail. So there has to be a really good reason to back it on Kickstarter. And with 6,000 some games released every year, I don't necessarily need that rare bird that's only on Kickstarter. So All right. uh, Roger likes the idea of. Of, of of making a list that like if a game gets enough votes we review it mm-hmm. you could you could open it up to uh pay, as a patreon thing patrons could do votes on didn't we, we had that at one time or we talked uh, about it we had that on tabletop deals a long at different time ago. times you had that as a level on tabletop deals for x yeah. amount of money i'll buy and review a game but the one t- like it came up like twice and we hated the experience i don't think yes. you want to go there again <laughs> yeah um so this is a topic I know we've already done. It's maybe some thoughts about crafting a collection, what to cull, and when. And I, well, I know we've just we done that recently. That. So yeah. Uh, how about looking back at games that you reviewed recently, and then I, tell us which ones you are still playing? See, I do like that. That's tough, though, because we really we have so much content we need to generate. Exactly. Even when we want to play a game again, we don't necessarily used to because of the 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 requirement content coming up so the sad sad truth is that we drop them yeah (laughs) as much as i might love to play uh you know um uh, my my favorite sci-fi game uh uh, uh, 2048 um pulsar 2048 uh, we don't we don't have time to play that because the next time you know we we need to get two reviews out next week and two reviews after yep. that and two reviews after that yeah and the pile of obligation a bunch, bunch of times makes those makes it hard yeah though though we are getting to the point where potentially uh well starting this month and potentially going forward we will be hosting two game nights a month that's where stuff like that tends to come out that's that's the replays tend to come at the public play events mm. when yep. it's me d and sean we tend to be playing obligation stuff because so yeah. we need to play it to be able to review it. I tend to like slightly heavier, just north of medium euros that are usually covered. But I also really like the hidden gems and that you find those obscure games that even I've never heard of. There you go. See, that's, I, I think we do a pretty good I job on the, the obscure. That just sounded like D saying D's own comment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm just did kind of. my own inject- No, I swear. Well, when to you God, first started that, this. I thought that's what you were doing, and you were going to lead to that some just other sounded point. Way too much. Like I do your own like comment. slightly heavier games than we usually cover. <laughs> All right. Uh, sometimes the episodes feel like they run a bit long. Fortunately, I catch them after the fact and can play them back at 1.5 speed. Yep, they do. Um, and, and I listen to most of my podcasts at 1.5 speed. So there you go. And you don't oh. even want to know what I do to people's podcasts. <laughs> it's Mo, awful. Mo it has chipmunk uh, abilities. Uh, your top games of all time. We yeah. did that once already this we year. We did that, yeah. Sorry, what games, was that? Top games of all time. We We try to do that once a year. Like, like ish. approximately ish. Well, not all time. This was the first no, time no. I've done all time. That's, yeah, done that's right. We've done it times. twice. We did it for something. You episodes? tend to do. Yeah. No, you tend to do our top games of the past of year. year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but I think exactly. the 200th episode, we did our top 20. Yeah, we did. Well. yeah you did. That was I was just trying to remember when we did it before. And it was the first time. So we will probably do it again on episode 300. Or 400. One of the two. Yeah. Games that are better online, like say on BGA. I, we have person. that question in the question list, and I, I don't know. I, I don't play enough. Sean plays quite a few. I could probably do that one. 
I can yeah, probably do so answer that. We should we should bookmark that one. I we have a very similar question, except it's games to play online through Zoom. Mm. And I just don't feel I use Zoom enough and I haven't yeah. tried it. Like I know there are people who did a lot of that during COVID. We got into Board Game Arena instead. We didn't mm-hmm. do the Zoom thing. Yeah. We had a chat open while we were on Board Game Arena, but and, and we sometimes even had video, but we weren't playing over Zoom. It was just there as a, a way to chat while we played. Uh, another vote for more live plays. Another vote yeah. for more guests on the show. I guess it's I, I'm so torn on guests because every time we've had a guest has performed our worst episodes of all time are mm-hmm. the guests. The only thing that performed worse were the were the um, Express episodes. Like, I mean, to be I, fair, though, we have done two indie designers and someone who was a Kickstarter uh, influencer. Yeah. Yeah. Which right, isn't I, really our, 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 that's not our target market. Um, no. I can't recall if you've already covered this game, so I'll have to go back and listen again, but I have seen an old game, Supremacy, the game of the superpowers from the mid 80s, and I think it looks like it has an in game market that you have to use power. You have to use to power your armies, and I think a review of this game would be cool. Again, like I, I, I think we need some kind of like a no promises vote on what we review. We'll take it into consideration list. Or trying, something. To, trying to find a copy of that one will be the hard part. I think that one's still around. Oh, okay. So speaking of games from the 80s, I would like to see some vintage games, maybe from my youth in the 60s and 70s. If, yeah, if, I mean, I could, if we could get our hands getting on getting a hold of them. It's, well, we should do that that wacky one that we picked oh, up. Oh, yes, um, yes, we probably should. Yeah, we should do that, and we should do Close Encounters. Yeah, exactly. Oh. So that would be an episode right there. Of, I, I of, would uh, be, I, I should, and I keep considering, and I never do because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a social pariah and I stay at home, but I, I keep meaning to, like, go out and, and hit the Goodwills and things like that just to, you know, check and see if you can find some of those wacky games because those would look fun up in the background even. That's true. Yeah, that's um, yeah. true. And so uh, that would be interesting and and those would be something where it's like you know you we we wouldn't play we wouldn't necessarily play it five times with three groups or anything like that no. but you know give it a try have a laugh and and say if it was actually fun or if it was just as bad as it we thought it would be yeah so it looks like someone reprinted supremacy in 2020 yeah, apparently no one has it, it looks terrible <laughs> uh more two player game updates always uh, it is our most <laughs> talked about t- the one we keep bringing back. Yep. Yep. Folks, definitely. Uh, are- we will continue to share and talk about two player. You really can't compare around for our last two episodes, right? We we talked about show boom. We talked about boop. We're we're going to continue to highlight two player games. I don't feel currently we need another best two player games of 2023 or anything like that at this point. No, at some point, probably at some in, point in we'll the new year, we'll probably do, do an update. do another uh, Valentine's episode. Yes. yes. So yeah, uh, but, su- supremacy. Oh, it was updated again in 2021. So it's out there. There are new versions, streamlined rules, and board board and pieces. I have no idea how to get this. <laughs> there's one review. There's no files. There's one version. Uh, I'm guessing it was probably crowdfunded. Mm-hmm. Looking at this, I had that one. That was in our collection at one point. I, I don't know where it got sold. I would love to see you be able to go to more cons. So would so I. We, so yeah. would we. <laughs> yeah. Um, see, and now this is the thing. I'm like, every now and then I wonder, because I've seen other people do it. Like, should we launch a Kickstarter saying send Tabletop Bellhop to Gen Con? And then another one that says send Tabletop Bellhop to Game Hole Con. And if, like, it literally just throw it out there. Like, like you know, throwing stuff on the wall and seeing if it sticks. Like, yeah, if we get I enough people to do it, we go. I, I know I'm still struggling with with uh, paying our bills from having gone to Origins yes. and financially we can't go to more than two cons a year. Like yeah. it's not like, happening. Yeah, exactly. It's just not. And and unless we we suddenly explode or PayPal triples the amount they pay, quadruple ten times, ten times, ten folds. Um, another topic I know we've already covered: good games for introducing young kids to board games. That's going to uh, get harder as our kids get older. I'm, yeah. it, our info is going to be out of date. Yeah. Like, I, I, unfortunately, we get to the point where we're no longer 
new parents anymore. So I can guess based on having the experience of having been a parent, but yeah. I am a parent. But you know, what I mean? like Tori, parents, yeah. we, we have Tori and Kat on in, in a year and a half and, you know, or in two years. And mm -hmm. they they talk about the games they introduced. More board game history and the cultural impact of particular games. We are I don't not know. historians. Yeah, there are there are there is um, Scott Rogers mm -hmm. has a segment called the biology of a board game. We have listened to that before. Listen it's fascinating. That. Yeah, listen to that. That's that. That is. I, I can't even remember and if it's part of Dice Ludology? Tower where he does. Ludology it. gets into that. Uh, Ludology too, often gets they? into it now yeah. as well. The Ludology podcast. But Scott Rogers' biology of a board game. Let's see if he can get that on its own. I'd like to see you guys play games. I particularly like playthroughs where people talk about their thinking progress. Sorry, and, their thinking process regarding their moves. Okay, so it's part of the Dice Tower podcast, which no longer exists. So I don't know where he does it now, but there is a geek list on um, on Board Game Geek on every game he's gone through. And it's a lot. Like, it started with Big Trail House in the Hill, Cosmic Encounter, Hero Quest, Quirkle, Survive, Escape from Atlantis, Carcassonne, and so on. Um... Oh, no, and then he started doing it on Ludology. No, yeah, there you go. See? There we go. And there's three pages of these. <laughs> so, like, Candyland, he did on Ludology. I'm going to see where he's still doing it, because I'm going to go to the most recent. The most recent, again, he's on the Ludology podcast. He just did the Game of Life. Oh, my gosh, I knew a thing. Yeah. On the, on the Ludology podcast, he goes into the checkered history of the Game of Life. Uh, there's no date on this. Oh, July 20th. 2020. So it looks oh. like he's no longer doing oh. this. Unfortunately. Pre pandemic. Yeah. He gave oh, up. no, wait. There's another page. Oh, oh, oh. Um, August 17, 2021. Oh, uh, yeah. So, but I, I, we never do even close to as good as Scott did. Now, what I, I found, I, I would like to know what people thought of our Tapple review last week because I added a bit of that in there and I don't always do that, but it fascinated me. So I threw it in. Um, what was even more fascinating than I missed is that the first version is from like 1913. We got into it a bit when we we did the uh, Native American designers. Well, that one made sense. Yeah, mm -hmm. we got into. Yeah. Um, here's another one that I know we've already covered board games based on video games. Check. Um, I would like to see an ongoing adventure game that Mo hosts that we can hear parts of like a radio show adventure. <laughs> Just totally snippets, and then we have to tune in to see what happens. I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> Sorry. Now, oh, I love the idea, but. You should address Take That Style Games and its popularity. Okay. I, I, that, that should go on the topic list. I'll, I'll, I'll happily do top, whatever, 13 Take That Games that I like. Explain its popularity. I will. I, people. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know that people find that fun. I don't. I don't know the psychology <laughs> of it. Uh, games we will be for, reviewing a take that game tonight. Yeah, games for tweens and parents for up to eight players. We games kinda, less than thirty minutes for quick plays instead of TV to entertain your kids after school. So that's, that's, a, a, question. that's a question. Throw it in the yeah. question list. It's good because the question list had, had been kind of dry recently. So I would like to fresh. hear more suggestions about how to run a game night with friends. How do you juggle multiple games being played at once? Does the host need to float back and forth between games to make sure players are playing properly? Does the host get to participate in games? How do you determine what people will play which games? How to handle conflict if too many people want to play more than one game? We've kind of done that. We've covered We've some of that, of but we haven't covered all of that. Yeah, we've done all of those in, in different segments of other episodes, I think. Like, we have a Dealing with Problem Players. We have the Be a Game Club. Um, like, I almost want to answer all those right now, but it's not an AMA. So, I, I throw that in the list, I guess. Um, tips for being a game night host is probably a, mm -hmm. a good episode. Um, gaming with kids, always an interesting topic. Uh, Again, our, our, as our kids get older, it's hard for us to talk about that with any authority. I would like to see games listed by genre. I have seen other podcast websites. Like, I think Shut Up and Sit Down does this. I cannot even fathom how I would begin to address that. It would be such a huge I project. I want to do it. Project. It's certainly not happening anytime soon. Yeah, I, I would love what we have done 
is we have made a master list of every game we've ever reviewed. Yep. That is something we did not have before. So you can That's now go true. on and look at it. It's not currently like sortable, searchable or anything like control. It's just, that, alphabetical. You know? it's just alphabetical by game. Um, what I would love to do, and we've seen this on a couple other podcasts, and I think it is shut up, sit down, where they basically have like a board game geek like page for every game. And then it has a link to their video review, a link to their unboxing, a link to mm-hmm. this, as, lo- as well as a summary of the game and like their rating. I would Every love to do that, that, but they're using some kind of API. Like they've got a web developer who put this together for them. And we just don't have the well, skill. I was actually planning on doing that next. And I do have the skill. Thank you very oh, much. There you go. But <laughs> you just said I, you couldn't the, do it. the listing it by genre and breaking it down by genre. I just think it's but a wouldn't that be the same thing? Job. No. No, it okay. wouldn't. It's not the same as going, here is everything we've ever had to say about holotype. I say then because holotype next thing is someone saying they would like to see review of holotype. Wouldn't that holotype just have a spot that has genre and you would click on it and you'd see all the other games in the same oh, genre? All the other games of the same genre. The difference is right now, we every time you talk about a game, we add a tag that has that game's name in it. Yeah. Okay. So it's really easy for me to make a page that just pulls all the tags of every time you've ever talked about Zombicide and makes a little grid with Right. Okay. But we don't have tags for genre. They're hit and miss. They're all over the place. Yeah, sometimes, we we do, sometimes we don't. So I can't I'd have to go back through all our content and assign those tags. And then I could sort by genre. It's just a big project. Yeah. Anyways, people would like to see a review of holotype. And I'd like to see we have more. It, I think don't we? We do, we have and I'm super looking forward to uh, reviewing that one. I yeah, thought like you go get one. it. I'm like I super want to check that one out. Um, but we haven't unboxed it yet. Yeah. Uh, like to see more Simon game plays like Zombicide. We didn't like Zombicide, so no, that one's hard. That's, I am that's... not a big fan of the big Simon miniature games. I sold my copy of Rising Sun. Um. So again, yeah. that's the catering to what we actually enjoy. I have not loved most of the big Simon miniature games. Uh, Super Dungeon Explorer, okay. Arcadia Quest, that was one of the better ones, but I still didn't love it. Um, I don't need miniatures. I don't have time to paint miniatures now. That one's hard. Um, if I if I was interested, I would reach out to Simon, and I haven't felt the need to do so because I right. haven't loved their most recent games. And it's just, they're not for us. Sorry. Uh, a segment about matching games to certain player types, much like, it, much like a dating app or like the dating game. Yeah, Select but we... two games, then try and construct an ideal player profile for each game. There are plenty of systems for defining player types. Then, just like a dating app, you would swipe one game right and one game left to match their ideal profile. You can even get the audience involved in choosing whether you should go left or go right. Hmm. It could be very hokey, but a very fun segment on your show. That, That's that an interesting idea. Interesting idea that'd be hard to throw in. It'd be very easy to do because we even have the built-in software for left, right. If you go to the board game ranking engine. Oh, that's true. You, 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 I don't... You'd, have to, you'd have to, I guess, import my collection and then rank it for someone other than me. Like, it like might be there. fun. Like It might be a fun segment to do live on twitch but i'm not sure it would play off well in the podcast i don't know yeah that that's kind of different from what we do it'd be kind of new i don't know Mm -hmm. um in the flow so we have covered how to pick what game to play for Mm -hmm. the general version of that that is a topic we've done when was the last time you were so immersed in a game that you lost track of time and lost track of anything else going on around you? And what types of game trigger this flow state for you? So it's another question. That's an, it's it's more of an AMA question, I think. Oh, people want more superhero RPGs. Here you go, Sean. <laughs> superhero RPG list. That blog has been so popular, but there's so much more out there, and I'd love to see you do a revisit. Hey, that's, that's better than... <laughs> There's specific games you missed. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you didn't talk about my game. I got to say, my no matter what, game. if we ever, ever do a segment on RPGs, we are most definitely not putting in mutants and masterminds or champions. We drive so much interaction by not having those in there. We'll just never, ever talk about so those I, games. In, in fact, since I own both of them, I will put them over my shoulders and not address them. Yes, <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> I'm like, I'm... That's just trolling at that point. <laughs> well, um, yeah. 
the next one's is another straight up question. Dungeon crawlers. What games did you never expect to like that you ended up loving? I guess it's two different things. They want dungeon yeah. crawlers. And they also want to know what games did you never expect to like that you ended up loving? We kind of talk about uh, yeah, that. We've, in our, our we've, yearly... we've done dungeon crawlers. Yes. We've done sure. both of those. I'm yeah. Much. The problem with dungeon crawlers is that the time commitment means we're not keeping up with any of the new ones. Mm-hmm. I don't have the time to dedicate to a dungeon crawler anymore. Mm-hmm. Like we could do our favorite dungeon crawlers, but it's going to be games from 10 years ago. Like I, I'm not even joking. I, I can't, except for the reprint of hero quest. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is, I would like to know what your thoughts are on the future of tabletop games, as well as all related industry trends. I don't know. I, I, I we don't really have a new segment. I thought about adding one. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. Do people care about our opinions on AI art and games or so, well, whatever. that could be fascinating. We're talking about how to trim the co- the content yeah. down, and you're talking about adding more stuff in. That could be right? that could That's be like you know, if we are we are we recording a, an episode just before New Year's, you know, that could be that so, you know that episode that we do that's mm-hmm. kind of taking a look at at trends and and things like that. That that could yeah, actually I mean, that be, could a, be a fun episode. Sure, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's it, it, it's it's counter to our we want to be a dear Abby for gamers where we answer questions. Mm-hmm. Like I guess the question can be where do you see the industry going? But like we're not we're not here for speculation, right? I, I want to talk about the games I played. I I, I want to talk about where the industry is. I, I just hope it gets better, right? You like want I, speculation, I go to X. Yeah, like yeah. I, I don't know. I, All right, I'd like to see more Middle Earth themed games. So would I. Uh, I would like an overview of Madara. Don't More, it. Uh, I, yeah. Again, like I said, it's some kind of review request list. More reviews about not typical games, like when you talk about escape boxes or puzzle books. Oof. So again, that's cool. I, I that's think, another vote for that content. I think that's that's going to continue at this point. Like uh, the, that that stuff has performed well. We mm-hmm. will continue to mix in tabletop puzzles and escape room experiences and stuff like that. Other things that people are just telling us they want to hear about is Final Girl, Red Dragon Inn, Big Book of Madness. Um, Red Dragon Inn, I own. I could talk about it. It's uh, Again, it's a topic we've already covered. Uh, Some approaches to understanding difficult or poorly written rule books. We We covered that, right? Yeah. Yeah, we, we, We did do that. What to do when you got a bad rule book, I think, is... Yep. I would love to see some content about murder mystery games and ones involving a group of four or more or a party. And most recently, check out our preview of Body of Evidence from Mysterious Package Company. So we've never like done one of oh, the yeah, mystery we done party the specifically. Yeah, you know, like the true. party night games. We haven't done that. So yeah, I've been invited um, to a few. I I those tend to be these like super dress up events, and that's no, just not no, us. People like throw them at their own houses like you buy the box and it yeah, has no, like no a, one i know has yeah. done that we'd have to do one but again, we'd have to do our one. host yeah. is not set up for that our yeah okay. if, no if you're talking right about now. those the, the mis- murder mystery night with dinner mm-hmm. yeah I, that, that's not something we're currently probably playing, not so but i don't know we do do murder mysteries da, da, da. Uh, at my request because i enjoy them mo doesn't like them so much yeah i'm not a big um, fan <laughs> reviews of older imprint games that might fly under the radar yeah, we just need a new hidden gem episode. I more, guess. And the next one is more underrated games. So yeah, people like hidden gems. I mostly follow for the announcements of really good gaming deals. Occasional notices of really good deals from smaller online vendors might be nice. We have been working to do more of that. Yeah, we've been doing more. The problem with the smaller vendors is they tend to be like local stores and stuff, and it's just not pertinent to everyone. Right. Or well, yeah. most of the U.S. Because again, yeah. that is they that said is if where you have our viewers are. If you have the bandwidth to follow smaller vendors. Well, I mean, personally, I'm saying like I'm, I'm viewing miniature market as a smaller yeah. vendor as opposed to, say, Target and Amazon. Mm-hmm. I'm not talking about Bob's best games in Arizona, you know, yep. um, and We've that's it. Talking about I've, you, I've Bob. reached the <laughs> we are talking about you, Bob. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to call you out like that. Um, and that's it. I finally got to the end. All right. Well, that was a ton of feedback. So thank you, everyone, who took the time to answer this informal poll. It really is appreciated. Now, it doesn't take a special occasion for you to be able to reach out to us. If you've got some feedback for us, positive or negative, we'd love to hear it. 
As you heard tonight, we take this stuff to heart and are willing to use it to improve the show for everyone. Now, you can always email me at tabletop or moa at tabletopbellhop.com, Sean at tabletopbellhop.com, or Deanna at tabletopbellhop.com, or just CC all of us. Uh, you can hit us up on social media. Your best bet is just try to find me, Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Pretty much every social media platform that's out there. Uh, direct message is probably the best way to reach it so it doesn't get lost in the field. Um, also, join our Discord, Discord mm -hmm. tabletopbellhop.com not discord.com slash I messed myself up with my notes discord.tabletopl.com honestly that's the one that like I read everything that goes there uh, probably because it's not all that busy but that is the one place that I'm not going to miss it so that's a, that's a great place to do it uh, comment on our stuff uh, if, if you're watching this on YouTube and you have a question you can put it in the comments um, we love your feedback we, we want to hear we want to make the show better um, we love our current fans but it'd be nice to be able to reach some more people and if some minor tweaks Help us do that. We're willing to make those changes. What we probably won't do is completely change the show. We're never going to be about the new hotness. We're never going to be the the buddy cop show, good cop, bad cop, or cracking jokes all the time. We are who we are, and that's not going to change. Now that we're in October, we thought it would be a good time to review a Halloween-themed escape room game, one of the holiday hijinks games from Grand Gamers Guild, we have to thank for dropping off a review copy with us last summer. The Pumpkin Problem is the third game in the Holiday Hijinks series of escape room style puzzle games from Jonathan Schaefer and our friends at Grand Gamers Guild. This is a small pack 18 card game that can be played in about an hour. It's designed for one or more players of any age. This particular puzzle has a rating of two out of three for difficulty. This is the third Holiday Hijinks game and coincidentally, the third one we've played and yeah. reviewed. Check out our reviews of the Independence Incident and the Birthday Burglary for our thoughts on other 18-card Escape Room in a Box games from Jonathan. Now, in addition to the cards you get with the game, you also need access to the web to be able to log into a companion app. Uh, this is where you're going to get the story of the game and enter, enter your answers to the clues and puzzles you'll face. You're also going to want some scrap paper, and for this particular game, I also recommend having some card sleeves and rut erase markers. Now, just like the previous Holiday Hijinks games we've reviewed, the web app page also includes a detailed step-by-step -step clue system, as well as mm -hmm. a set of useful information, including common cipher like maritime flags, letter substitution. Everything is self-contained here, and you won't need any outside information. You don't even really need to know that much about Halloween to play or solve the game. Now, this is set on Halloween night, and the night of trick-or-treating is under threat. Everyone's candy has gone missing, and even the treats you were planning to give out yourself. It's up to you to save Halloween by finding the missing candy and figuring out who the culprit is. Due to the fact this is a puzzle-based game, we didn't record any form of unboxing or anything as we didn't want to spoil any of the surprises. Now, the pumpkin problem is just a small shrink-wrapped card pack that folds open and holds 18 cards. This pack gives you the instructions on where to start and a QR code that'll get you to the web app. Card quality is excellent, and the game does a good job of using only 18 double-sided cards. While you can write on the cards, and trust me, you're going to want to, you don't have to destroy anything to play through this game. We strongly suggest sleeving the cards and using wet erase markers to help preserve. Now, not only that, as Deanna pointed out, if you are planning on just not worrying about it and writing on the cards with that kind of plasticky material that's difficult to write on, Sleeves and a fine point wet erase work great for us. So how do you play this Halloween themed card game? So getting going with any of the holiday hijinks games is pretty simple. You open up the card pack, you take out the cards, be sure not to look at them, open up the web app, select the game you're currently playing, hit start, do what it says. This is going to have you grab one of the cards from the deck, flipping it over and reading it. From that point on, it's pretty clear what you should be doing, which involves solving a puzzle and putting your solution into the app. If you've got someone who always shuffles cards, don't let them open the back. So honestly, if they're shuffled, it's not that big a deal because you're sorting through finding numbers anyway. The web app then continues the story and has you finding and flipping over more cards, giving you more puzzles and more clues to enter, leading to more cards and more puzzles. If at any point you get stuck, there's a clue system in the app that was created in a way that not only gives you a bit of information at a time so as not to spoil things. Now, with this particular game, we didn't feel the need to use any clues. But don't be afraid to use them if you need them. 
In many cases, all you need is that little push to let you know what you should be looking at or what things tie together. For this particular game, the main clue you may need is knowing which cards go together. Don't let a feeling of failure due to using hints lead to long moments of frustration. It's just not worth it. As you get deeper into the deck, you will learn more of the story and eventually enter the final solution and get your reward. You are then given a score based on how long you took and how many hints you used. Now, we ended up with a 4.5 this time, and to be fair, that's what we've gotten on every single one of these so far. But that's with no clues. But we did get one wrong answer while going through due to not paying quite as much attention as we should have on a particular logic puzzle. Now, that's pretty much all I want to say as far as how the pumpkin problem plays, as most of the fun of these games is the exploration of discovery that comes through playing through them. Now, you played this one with Dee and the girls. What did you think? So this was a very solid, very puzzle-filled escape room in a box experience. Story is cute. The puzzles are particularly suited, though, to more than one player. Each step of the game, each kind of stage, we were presented with two or three different problems or things to look into. And each of them was separate from each other. So that meant we can each work on our own part of the puzzle, steaming, teaming up when needed. This made the pumpkin problem, so far, the best holiday hijinks game for groups that we played. So no problem with too few or too many players? No, not at all. Uh, in this case, we had four. I would say in this for this particular game, three seems to be the sweet spot. Like you tended to be presented with three problems with four of us, just two of us paired up, which actually worked well as one of my daughters, as many of you know, have some learning disabilities. So it works. With, she likes to have someone to work with in the first place. Now, as for the puzzles themselves, they were a good mix. Uh, there was nothing we were stuck on very long. Every now and then we are looking at things kind of the wrong way and we end up coming back to a solution, usually after showing it to someone else and them going, oh, what you missed is this fact. It really is surprising to see what they managed to achieve with only 18 cards time mm -hmm. and time again without the games feeling repetitive, though I guess that by separating them out by holidays. Can someone help with that? Uh... Yeah. Now, one of the most impressive parts, too, is how the designer use these 18 cards to be double that really, really being 32 cards because they use both sides of the cards. In every game we played, the card backs have been much more than just a way of numbering everything and sorting things. Now, I don't want to spoil anything, but I particularly enjoyed how the backs in this particular game came out to play. Well, you'll just have to throw down that big holiday hijinks money for that info. Now, one difference from the previous holiday hijinks games we played is that we didn't need any specific knowledge of Halloween here. You don't even really need to know the traditions at all to get what's going on. It's all described pretty clearly on the cards. And unlike the last two games, there's no like background info on the app. For example, when we were playing Independence Incident, there was all kinds of things like Battle Limbs of the Republic. There's none of that you're going to find here. There's no there's just the the additional info. That's the same stuff that's been in all the games like the ASCII code. So it's good to know what ASCII 0153 is, but don't worry about who Sam Hain is. Overall. I can't help but be impressed by the variety we've seen in the entire series of these games. This particular game was basically three sets of puzzles, each of which was unique and varied and unrelated to the other. So you get a presented a bunch of puzzles, you solve them, then it presents a bunch more puzzles, and then you solve those and they present a bunch more. They're all, of course, very much tied to the Halloween theme. Now, where Independence Incident kind of felt like playing through an interactive story, it was, it was almost like, not a which way, but like you had to solve the solution to get to the next part of the story. And the birthday burglary really felt like a point and click style adventure where you're trying different things with different things to find solutions. This felt more like an escape room, though one based on puzzles and solving puzzles and logic, not on codes or physical manipulation. Well, three down so far and plenty more holidays to go. We'll see if they can keep surprising us with different gameplay from only 18 cards. So at this point, of the three holiday hijinks games we played, I think this was the quickest to get through. We found this easier than the other ones. Um, and by far the best with more than one player. Again, I, I think three is probably the sweet spot. But don't be afraid of, like, say, four or five as long as you don't mind pairing up. And I would think this was probably also the most accessible to the widest audience. This was, it's not that the others weren't family friendly, but this seemed more family friendly, which is just a very fun experience to play with my kids and my wife. The only thing I would have changed is I would have rather played this. And I think the kids definitely would have preferred to play this on Halloween. But if I did that, I couldn't be here telling you that it's worth picking up before Halloween for yourself. So there you go. Another solid pack of only 18 cards. If you're a fan of Escape Room in a Box style games, you really can't go wrong with the Holiday Hijinks series so far. And the pumpkin problem is no exception to that. 
These are great low priced puzzle games that are great for killing an hour with friends and family or to play on your own. Due to the theme of this particular one, this is great for playing on Halloween night while the kids are out trick or treating or while giving out candy or perhaps as a way to unwind at the end of the night while the kids are all hopped up on the candy. With the form factor and the price, they are just a standout product and a fantastic line of puzzle games from Grand Gamers Guild with a growing selection of holidays to choose from. Now, if puzzle games aren't your thing, I can't see this like winning you over in any way. It's it's not doing anything really new or innovative that we haven't seen before. There's nothing here that's going to wow you if you didn't already enjoy these kind of games. That said, I'm pretty sure you could probably get a jaded gamer to play it with you on the right name due to the theme. And of course, there are plenty of people out there who will go wild for anything Halloween. Yeah. So these can make great gifts as well. And you don't need to be a hardcore hobby gamer for these games. Now, the one idea I had that I think would be awesome, if I won a lottery, this is what I'd be doing this year. If I could afford it, I would love to give out copies of this game for Halloween. If you happen to be one of those households and only gets like five to ten kids or something, you might want to consider this. Like, how cool would it be to come as a kid to come home with a fully playable hour long game experience at the end of the night? I don't know what to think about that, because as a kid, I think the full sized candy bar probably would have gone over better. Yeah. But if you've got a party of grown ups. Well, that's it for our look at the Pumpkin Problem, a holiday hijinks escape room game from Grand Gamers Guild. So far, we've really been digging these small holiday themed puzzle games. You know us, we're always trying to mix some gaming in with our holiday celebrations. But what about you? Do you have any holiday gaming traditions? Tell us all about it in the comments below. All right, before you go, I want to call out two things. One, if you enjoyed this review and the other content we put out each week, please consider tipping the bellhop at patreon.com slash tabletop bellhop. Second, if you've got time, I invite you to check out my written review of The Pumpkin Problem and the other holiday hijinks games over at our blog at tabletopbellhop.com. Thank you for joining us for a look at The Deadlies, a deck-shedding card game from Kurt and uh, Smirtek and Dagger who was so sure we would love it, he insisted we take a review copy home from Origins. Thanks for that, Kurt. The Deadlies was designed by Paul Saxberg and features artwork from Lee Furman. It was originally released in 2020 by Smirk and Dagger Games and has since been localized for a number of different countries. Despite featuring Seven Sins, The Deadlies is a 3-6 to six player game with rules for 6 being a variant. A single round of The Deadlies takes about half an hour, but we found that most groups like to play a few games in a row. Yeah. The Deadlies has a very reasonable MSRP of only $15 US, making it an easy purchase for Take That card game fans. Now, the Deadlies is a card shedding game, meaning that you're trying to play all the cards in your hand. It features seven suits, one for each of the seven Deadly Sins, each of which has cards numbered one to seven, and then there's a few special cards. On your turn, you can play a set of cards from the same suit, a set of the same number, a straight or a single card. Now, each of the sins has a different special effect. Now, the first person to void their hand three times wins the game. Normally, this is where I would point you to our The Deadlies unboxing video, but we don't have one of those this time. Oh. This is because we picked this game up at Origins not only to check it out and review it, but also give us something to play after a long day of working. Now, The Deadlies comes in a nice small card box with a cardboard insert that's basically just a divider. You get a total of 52 cards, 49 split over the seven suits, and one copy each of the special cards, Corruption, Purity, and Halo. The card art on these is fantastic, as is the card quality. You mm -hmm. do a lot of shuffling in this game, as you will often go through the deck more than once during a single game, and I have no worries about the cards being damaged by this. Plus, if you are the worried type, you can always leave your cards. All the information you need about each suit is right there in the cards in pretty large font. The only potential issue with them really is that because of that, they aren't reversible. These cards are designed more like trading card games, like a Magic the Gathering card than, say, a playing card. Along with the cards, you get some nice thick cardboard tokens for tracking your wickedness level and a very clear and concise rulebook with lots of full color examples. Yeah, really no complaints here at all in regards to the components or quality of them. Well, why don't we get into an overview of play? All right, so this is one of those nice and quick to set up games. Everyone takes a weakness token, points it at them, so the six is facing them. Halo cards placed in the center of the table, the deck is shuffled, and everyone is dealt six cards. The most angelic player becomes the starting player and is dealt an additional card. On a player's turn, they play one or more cards from their hand, with the goal being to play every card in their hand. 
The tarp top card played has its effect activated. Now, cards can be played either individually or in three groups, the same suit, the same number, or a straight of any length. Each of the seven different suits and the two special cards have a different effect. Pride has you check another player to see if they also have pride. Wrath makes people pick up cards. Gluttony lets you draw a bunch of cards or steal from other players and lets you play again. Envy gives you a chance to swap hands with another player, having sloth cards in play and can cause you to draw more cards. Lust lets you and a partner play together, but with some risk, and greed has you pushing your luck. Uh, then there's the three special cards. When you play the purity card, you get to take the halo card in your hand. A player that manages to play halo gets to void their hand. Then there's the corruption card, which counts as every card type, all seven suits, while it's in your hand. And when you play it, you get to pick one of those card abilities to happen. And when a player empties their hand, they reduce their wickedness by two and draw a number of cards equal to the new level. The first player to get down to zero wickedness wins. Now, the rules also include a six player variant where everyone's wickedness and level starts at four and everyone starts with a hand of only four cards. You only have to void your hand twice to win when playing with six. So jumping back to earlier this year, Origins 2023, and Kurt from Smirk and Dagger insisted we take a review copy of the Deadlies away from his booth at Origins. I really had no clue what to expect. At the time, he said something like, it's Uno for gamers, you'll love it, as he walked away after tossing it on top of a pile of games I was holding at the time. I hadn't even heard of this game before this, didn't even know it existed. So it was on Sunday and the last day of the con, and we continued doing con things for the rest of the afternoon. That night, we decided to hit a local dive bar for some celebratory end of con drinks and fried cheese curds and brought the deadlies along. I read the rules as we waited for the first round to show up, and we tried out the game for the first time. Now, the first thing we noticed is there is a bit of a learning curve here, right at the start of the game. Not a steep one, but one that you have to get past. And this comes from a couple of things. The first being try to, re to remember what, the sets, what sets of cards you can play. The second is trying to remember what each suit does and exactly how they work. Mm -hmm. While the card text is right there, it's more of a reminder or summary. So it's worth having the rule book open during your first couple of plays so you can reference it each time a new suit comes up. Now, that said, it didn't take long at all for us to internalize this information. By the time we were done our first game, game one, we had most of it down. There were a couple suits we had to double check the rules for. Greed and Envy seemed to give us the most trouble. But by the time we finished our second game of the Deadlies, we were good to go. And since then, I honestly hadn't even looked in the rule book until earlier today when I opened it, just to make sure I wasn't missing or forgetting anything for this review. Now, even with that little bump in the learning path, it's not a hard game by any means. No. Uno for gamers is not a bad description at all, as any gamer who isn't dead set against card games for some reason We'll find some fun in this. Yeah, since that first play on Sunday in Columbus, we've been enjoying each and every play of the Deadlies. Of all the games we brought back from the con, this, this is the game that has gotten the most plays. And the most plays by the widest number of people. This includes my, entire, my, my immediate family, Gwen, Jen, and Deanna, my aunts and uncles from out of town, friends that have come down from up north to visit, a mix of local gamers at our public play events, and more. I mean, first off, it's a card game, so it's much more approachable to people than uh, than when you mention Uno, it becomes almost instantly familiar to most people. Yeah. Then you mention the seven deadly sins and folks will either get more interested or titter in amusement. And I honestly think that's the secret to the deadlies is how familiar it feels. It really does give you that Uno feeling, but without rounds that can go on forever or the nastiness of multiple draw two or draw four cards being played. Yes, we know the official rules. You're not allowed to do that, but who doesn't? And no having to remember what the current turn order is. Are you going left? Are we going clockwise? Are we going counterclockwise? Or possibly, most importantly, no need to keep score. The keeping score, or lack thereof, is really, I think, the secret sauce of this game. We aren't all math whizzes who can sum up a dozen cards in our hands with a single glance. And not having mm -hmm. to be embarrassed at taking up a bit longer to do the math can be a big deal for some people with forms of social anxiety. Now, once you learn what the various suits do, I actually find the Deadlies easier to play than Uno and definitely much faster. Added on top of that is the Seven Deadly Sins theme, which I think is part of the game that I, I like. I think it's great, but I can see how that theme may turn some people off. Like for us, it's never been a problem. We played games with adults and teen kids alike. Despite being about sins, the cards are like kind of 
cute, uh, maybe a little bit creepy. They're definitely not disturbing. And I've seen some interesting euphemism used by people playing Lust cards, but there's no real adult content here. As always, feel free to talk about it before playing if there's even a slight chance things might get uncomfortable. Now, another thing some players and groups may not enjoy is the take that nature of this game, just like Uno. Messing with other people's hands and trying to stop the current leader is how you play this game. While I wouldn't call it confrontational, you're still going to be stealing cards from other players, forcing people to draw cards, swapping hands with other players, and basically just trying to prevent other people from winning. I think more of this game is trying to prevent other people from winning than trying to win on your own. Now, to me, that's one of the highlights of the game is that it's so interactive and that you can never be certain that your next play will be. Even if you're set, you're like, I am so good. My next turn, I win. Yeah, until your hand gets filled with cards and someone swaps your hand and that Halo card has gotten away. Like, yeah, the game can be quite chaotic. And I love that part. What I especially love is once the Halo card comes into play, because then it becomes about stop the player with the Halo or become the player who plays the Halo. And the game totally, like the focus changes. Everyone gets more intense and leans in there and we fight over the Halo. And I think that's hilarious. Yeah, this is one of those things where it's really only a problem if it turns into bullying, where yeah. everyone is just being mean to one person. And that's not okay regardless of the game you're playing and should be handled outside of the game. So I gotta say, every time I have played with a kid and their parent on the table, I know where those Wrath cards are being played. Finally, I realize this is a quick filler party game. It's, it's a silly, have fun, socialized type of game. Well, it's a game I've actually filled an entire game night with, playing round after round. This isn't a deep, thinky game where you're trying to outsmart and outplay your opponents and prove who's the better player. This is a silly, laugh-out-loud fun kind of game, and it could turn off more competitive players. Though even most, if not all, competitive players will find this game light enough to be able to put away the desperation to win and laugh some. If you dig quick playing card games that are pretty easy to learn, but have a bit of meat on them, games that are a step above mass market favorites, but don't get too involved or go too long, you're probably going to enjoy the deadlies. This is even more true if you enjoy take that, screw your neighbor type games, and can laugh when you are one card away from victory, only to have your hand filled up with cards before you get to go again. Yeah, I had no clue what to expect when we were handed the deadlies, and now I'm super thankful Kurt tossed us a copy at Origins. This game really has been a huge hit with everyone I played it with. And this is the kind of game I can see bringing out during casual game nights and public play events for years to come. There you have our thoughts on The Deadlies, a quick playing, high interaction card game from Smirk and Laughter that won us over by game one. I love it when someone suggests a game to me and saying something like, you'll love this. And they're right. This is especially true when I have no clue what that game is beforehand. What's the last game someone recommended to you that you knew absolutely nothing about, but took a chance on and ended up loving? Let us know about it in the comments below. For a more detailed look at the Deadlies, including a better description of what each suit powers actually do, be sure to check out Mo's written review over on the blog at tabletopbellhop.com. And if you've got thoughts on this game, take that games in general, Smirk and Dagger, or really anything else that got brought up during this review, I do invite you to keep the conversation going over on the Tabletop Bellhop Discord, which you can find at discord.tabletopbellhop.com. And now in the Bellhop's Tabletop, we look back at the games we played since the last episode. So first game we played, Sean was over for a bunch of the weekend. No, Sean Connie didn't stay overnight, but we played a bunch of games together and tried to hammer through some of the games we brought back from Origins that we want to be able to review in the future. This started with a game of Distilled that sadly had to be cut short due to the place we were playing at closing earlier than we expected. While we almost managed to fit in a full game in under an hour, we were really close. We didn't quite make it. Um, I got to say, I think this was perfect in a way as a learning game because Sean got to see pretty much all the mechanics. Like the only thing he missed out was final scoring. Now, D and I have been digging this one. What'd you think of distilled? So, uh, I, you know, it was fun. Uh, the one thing I kind of regret doing was picking a, uh, a non aging, uh, focused player. So I didn't really yeah. get the aging, uh, spirits experience, but I had fun. Uh, I got a good early lead. I knew I wasn't going to win because I knew what <laughs> other people had aging. That's but, still, I, I don't know. I don't know how that one good, was going to It was going to be a good close game. Uh, and, and I think I liked the way it played. Um, yeah. I didn't especially love Belgian beer, raisin, viticulture. Uh, yeah. I'm not a drinker, but 
this one felt more like a fun game and less like thinking about beer and wine. Yeah, though it's still very thematic. Absolutely. Like, they managed to do a great job of making it thematic. And I, I don't know, I think the quick play, uh, it's a simpler game, and I don't mean to call it simple, but just a simpler, quicker Buy some stuff, distill some stuff. Buy some stuff, distill some stuff. Has a lot better flow than a lot of the heavier games. Uh, Belgian beer in, in particular uh, was kind of plotting at times. It wasn't. Yeah. It's not. It's a good game, and it's 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 not a bad game. But y- you really kind of have to think more about the whole Belgian beer experience than yes. than the game. It, it it's hard to separate that out. Whereas I think in distilled, it's thematic, but you can also just think about the game more mechanically if right. you if you want to. Yeah, which is the weird part. So I think it's the more thematic game of the two, but the theme matters less, which is is, is odd. Uh, next up was uh, an attempt to learn Orum. So we had played this only once before. This is a trick taking game from um, Pandasaurus. Um, and I think we finally got the mechanics down, the game down. This one's quite different from traditional trick taking card games we grew up with. And even most modern ones, because it just it throws you for a loop, right? Like little things like your trump cards are on the table. So even being able to play a card not in your hand is weird. And that's the only trump. And then, of course, the the one that all of I don't I think Deanna may have been the only person who hasn't messed it up yet. But you can't follow suit in this game. And that just breaks your brain. Yeah, I'm I'm horrible at the game, at least at three players. <laughs> uh, but it's fun despite not standing a chance. Uh, I don't yeah. mind playing it because it's it's a light social card game. It's not um, there because especially because of the the weirdness of it and the you know it it you have to think enough, but you can also just have fun and, and chat and have a beer and or yeah. have a drink and and play it uh, without worrying too much. Uh, you know. Yeah, we played a couple rounds with that. Uh, we again, we were only playing three player at this point. It's solid. It's 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 a solid game. Three players. It works. Um, if there were only three of us, I'm like, oh, let's pick a three-player game. I probably wouldn't run to this one, but it's okay. Yeah, definitely not my first choice, but not bad at three players. Uh, next up was muddling through a game of Tome of the Light Edition, um, the, the, which I, I expected it to be worse because we tr- first tried to play this after a, at a very loud bar at a, after a very long day at Origins when our feet were hurting, our butts were hurting, and we were super hungry and it was super loud. And we tried to figure this game out, and it has a lot of fiddly rules. Sitting in a bright, well-lit boba shop made things make a lot more sense this time around. Yeah, uh, muddling is a good word for this, I think. Not because it's difficult, but because it's not a good three-player game. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, 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 the thing I was thinking was we were going to have to like reference rule books and check FAQs and check board games. There was none of that. The game made a lot more sense this time, but Sean's right. Like once we had the rules down, it, it's a game. I, it's okay. There, there's some neat stuff going on. And like I do, the, their rules for 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 breaking suit is really cool. Actually, I, I like the rules for that. But like their three player game is a player elimination game, and it's hard to do player elimination right. And this does not nail it. And it just felt super random. Like the game was 100 percent tactical. You could not plan ahead. You just reacted to what the per- last person did. And no matter what you did, you still might have been eliminated no matter how well you played. Yeah, this was a game where, you know, we have we have to review this game. Uh, so we have to play it. But after <laughs> playing it again, three players, I wasn't eager to see it come out again. And that's despite yeah. me being better at it than I was at Aurum. Like, I'm actually yeah, not as true. bad at this game. Uh, but I, I was still really eager to kind of pass at this game. Now, we didn't pass because we like to try games multiple times. And this particular game, Tome, the Light Edition, specifically is designed as a four player game. There is a three player variant um, and there's a four player variant where you can play survival, which I, I don't even think I'm going to try. This was shocking. So we we came home, grabbed Gwen, uh, who seems to really enjoy Twitch taking games and sat down and played a four player game with teams. Right. Uh, it happened to be Sean and I versus Gwen and D. And I have never played a game that was that distinctly different swapping from three to four players like oh boy what would a difference this game went from a random unfulfilling toss some cards in the middle and see what happens to a very solid rather cutthroat trying to communicate to your partner lots of help me out here moments like everything i want in a trick taking game yeah i was so glad i pulled up a chair instead of going home complete 180 of the game in my mind 
Um, the sort of change that makes me wonder why on earth they put a three player <laughs> on the box. Like, yes, technically you can play a game with three players, but did they ever try that game? Yeah, I wonder how much play testing went into the three player version of this game, or if just the designer was like, oh, here's a way you can play three players. And, and I mean, uh, yeah, again, uh, technically it works. It is a it, game. It, at it's three it's players. playable. It's a game. It's 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 a game. So yeah, um, I, I I don't know. Like like I've never seen it before. Like like Valeria. Okay, we 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 said many many times about Valeria, and it was interesting because we didn't play it teams until the very end. We're like yeah, play it teams. You want to play with two or four or six? It's great that way. But it's still good, which is with, with with three or five. It still works. It's fine. Yeah, I mean I've never played the, Valeria in teams, and I really enjoy Thrones of Valeria. Yeah. See exactly, this no I I sorry designers I'm not giving three player I'm never touching that game with three players again because we just went wow that was so much better um let's wrap up the night trying Orum again but with four players and you know what almost the same experience the difference is Orum's good three I I will happy play Orum three someone said hey do you want to play Orum there's only three of us I'll play so I will say I'll probably look around the room and try to find a fourth after this because man that is good four. I really liked Orem at four. Um, and here it was, it was the team. It was, it was the teamwork, the communication rules. Um, there's no table talk allowed, but like trying to read into what color players bid and what numbers they bid and what they're leading. Like, I honestly think I, I'm like a partial card counter. I keep track of certain key cards or I know that I'm voided of certain colors or I pay attention to, Oh, my, my opponent or sorry, my partner, didn't play this suit, so I have a good idea what they have. But like, I'm I'm not a I don't know what everyone's hand is, and this is a perfect information game. To the fact that when you deal out the hands, the two cards that are left aren't even face down; they're face up on the table to see it. This game is a card counter's dream. This is a game my dad would have adored. Indeed, he would have loved it, and I would have not played it with him because <laughs> he would be that good at it. He would. But again, big change in opinion, even if not as big as Tome. Or yeah. was an enjoyable, fluffy social card game at three to becoming a solid trick taker at yeah. four. Both playable, but at four, it became a real game. Yeah, no, it was it was fantastic. Um, the other thing we did is we did check out a couple of Windsor's local gaming cafes that I, I feel shame that it took us so long to kind of check them out. I'm not going to really get into details on here, but one of the ones we checked out was everybody's place in Amherstburg. Um, we had a good meeting with Kate, one of the owners, and I am happy to announce we will be helping them host their first ever everybody's open game night board games in the Berg on October 21st. This event's going to run from five till 9 PM. And I encourage anyone in Windsor, Essex, possibly even Detroit, if you're willing to make the trip across the border to come check out our area's newest board game cafe. They have a surprisingly good selection of games, around 250 games, but man, the breadth, like uh, the players of all experience levels, ranging from like copies of the new hotness like Earth and Connect Four. Hot and cold beverages, gamer friendly food like sandwiches, pizzas and hot dogs. Um, no, no liquor license for those of you who do enjoy that part of gaming. Save that for our barbershop bar game event, which is on October 14th, the week before. So if you want to get your drink on, come on the 14th. If you just want to check out a new place, come out on the 21st. Even better, come out to both and I'll teach you some games. All right. Well, I, while I won't be able to make it to the one that everybody's having met the owner and explored the place, I think this has some real potential for play, for folks out in the area and the surrounding part of the county to come enjoy some good games, food, and fun. All right. As for next week, um, we're planning on playing the turkey trial. Uh, Thanksgiving, that's, that's this weekend for us. So this weekend we will be playing the turkey trial so we'll be talking about the latest holiday hijinks game and i gotta say i think i think fireside games can can apply i think we're gonna finally review castle panic big box second edition i kind of hope to get sean in on at least one quest game that's not gonna happen i don't think before then so we're gonna review that as for gameplays um we were just talking about how much better tome and orum is i feel confident reviewing orum right now but i'm gonna try tome two player <laughs> And I got to say, based on the three player experience, I'm not expecting much. Um, but who knows? Maybe I'll be just as surprised with how good it was four player. Um, the difficulty is going to be convincing Deanna to try it two player. I might have to uh, call Gwen in the room for that one, because because I will say here's here's a good question before before we move on to the to wrap up here. Which did you prefer at four player? at four player? Um, probably Tome. Yeah. Gwen was Tome. I was Orem. 
I think Deanna was also toned, which is shocking to go from I never want to play it again to better than like, honestly, Orem's one of the new hot trick takers everyone's talking about. Well, I, I like I liked Orem better. It's I don't interesting. Know, I, about I, Orem. I would almost have to try it again because again, the 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 contrast between three and, and four could be yes. coloring my view on Tome. Yeah. Uh, so you know, it's hard You're to just say. Like, oh my god, it was actually good. So I like it more than it actually was. That's possible. Um, what I'd love to do is get to try, have you over sometime and try with Sentinels of Earth Prime and Volume 2 of Kapow. But I do know you're out of town this weekend, so I don't know if that's going to fit in somewhere. Maybe we can get that in on the holiday Monday or something. Um, and plus, I know you are as well as I'm itching to play Seize of Havoc. I don't know what it was this weekend. We could not convince Deanna to play, despite the fact she liked it. She just was had no interest in playing that this last weekend. Um, I think that's about it. Um, next week is Amazon Prime Big Deal Days or something. So please pay attention to our tabletop gaming deals if you like Amazon and like save money on board games. Otherwise, please go support your friendly local game store. Well, before we start locking things down, let's take a moment to thank a selection of our tabletop bellhop Patreon patrons. Their support helps keep this show going. Jeff, Sheila, and Clara Seuss, thank you. Kat Tori and Clark Domey, thanks. Brian Van Beek, thank you, Brian. William Fisher, thank you, William. Danielle and Owen Thomas, thank you. Well, that was the double bell. That means our shift's coming to an end, and I realize we didn't talk about coffee enough, so I can't drop the poor colors because Ryan's not here. We're going to have to lock the lobby doors. Hopefully he doesn't show up late. Well, the doors are closed. Even though they're through the Venom renovations, you can find us at tabletopbellhop.com. All over the web is Tabletop Bellhop, one word. And on your podcatcher of choice, as the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, unless you've got Google Podcasts, because they're just going to shut that down like everything else. You can uh, join us at Tabletop Bellhop's Discord, discord.tabletopbellhop.com. And always, you can tip your bellhop at patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop. Though, if you do do that, you do get some bonus content, including a behind-the-scenes blog post, heads up on our episodes and what we're going to be talking about that night, a reminder to join us copies of our show notes, and probably most importantly, bonus audio for those of you who can't be here live and join us in the lobby and our coffee break. Well, that's all for us tonight. If you enjoy our content, leave a review, a comment, or a like wherever you find it. Drop by YouTube and try a totally free subscription. For the <laughs> Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, I'm Sean. And I'm Mo. Thank you. And, and game, game on. on.